Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. There was a difference between just being a nominal Christian, Sunday to Sunday Christian, Bible study Christian, and one who has a passion, a desire, and a resolve to seek the Lord and to pursue Him with everything. I saw what looked like Christianity, but I was not satisfied. And I knew that there had to be more. And I began to explore. I read the books of great men like Watchman Nee. I read materials of people like Peter Tan. I read the books of Kenneth Hagin. I studied God's generals, revivals. In a bit to find out that spiritual ingredient that is responsible for a life of fire. For a life that is not cold at all. Hallelujah. And I discovered a few things. And I'll be sharing some of them. With us tonight. Hallelujah. In my opinion. I think that. The. The greatest disaster. That can happen to. A man. Is not. Um, it's not sickness in fact it's not even demonic oppression as bad as these things are I think that in my opinion the greatest disaster that can happen to a man is that you walk in error or you do not press through spiritual things to attain the full stature of that which can be available for you in the spirit. I once heard the story, I think it's a popular story in the Christian faith, about a man who boarded a ship and part of that ship there was a package for his meal. Have you heard that story? And the man was more than grateful to get into the ship. And for days... He was scrounging the little um, food that he held. And his table was vacant. And when he was almost dying, he was told that there had been provision for more. This is how it is with many believers. We do not know that there can be more, that our Christian experience can become richer, that we can become a lot spiritual than we are. And, and that which I seek to teach tonight will help us to understand this so that we do not just get born again and stand at the gate of the kingdom and not press deeper. Hallelujah. Now, according to scriptures, please write, the Bible reveals to us, spiritually speaking, that there are three categories of people, three types of man. As far as it has to do with our walk with God. The Bible reveals to us clearly 
that at any given point in time, you will find three kinds of people. Number one is what the Bible calls the natural man. The natural man. Number two, the Bible calls this second kind of man the carnal man. The carnal man. Number three, he calls the third kind of man the spiritual man. And this is very interesting. Please follow me. So the Bible tells us that when God is speaking through the word, he's speaking to three kinds of people. There are words that are directed to natural people. There are words that are directed to carnal people. There are words that are directed to spiritual people. And I believe that one of the challenges in the body of Christ is that we have not been accurately taught what I call the path of spiritual progress. The transitions from the natural man, the exact spiritual requirement that it takes for you to leave the realm of a natural man to the next phase. And that when you are in that second phase, many of us have not been taught exactly the spiritual pathway that transforms men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Hallelujah. And I truly am convinced that part of the reason why many believers are not strong in the spirit and cannot do much for the kingdom is because they have not been taught the spiritual pathway that transits men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Now, it's very sad that we don't agree over many things in the body of Christ. And we just thank God for his grace and his faithfulness. I think that one of the things that we all agree over in the body of Christ is the condition of being born again. If you confess Jesus Christ, you confess, you believe that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. Every sect, every denomination believes that and there is no argument about that. The moment that you satisfy that condition, you are accepted across every denomination. But after that, we almost don't agree on anything again. And so there has been confusion through the years as to the exact path of spiritual progress. Hallelujah. And tonight, the teaching is an attempt to bring us into that understanding, I truly believe that this holds the key to our deeper and our richer work with God. I read a book by a man who was acclaimed to be the 21st century prophet, a man called A.W. Tozer. The Pursuit of God. Powerful book. These were men whose dimensions of spiritual understanding was amazing. I have read many books i have been built by so many people in the body of christ but there are certain people that their teachings and their spiritual paradigm has left a mark upon my life that will never be erased their understanding about god is so accurate when you study their writings you know that these people encountered god hallelujah there are so many books in the body of christ Attempting to answer different questions about the pursuit of God. And the challenge is that, you see, when hunger meets error, it becomes a very unfortunate thing in the spirit. There are many believers who are hungry. We come to God, we come to church, and we say, I am thirsty. Lord, reveal more. You see, when you are hungry, you are like a baby whose mouth is open. Anything that can fill you, you will take it and swallow it sincerely. Hallelujah. And many of us 
That's the journey that begun the error that we have come into. We, have, we delved into it sincerely. When we got born again, there were probably no good Christian groups and fellowships around us to build us accurately. And so everything that looked like light, we ran to it and we poured our lives to receive it. And that little that we had is what we are holding on to today. But the unfortunate part is that some of what we received is not the accurate truth. So I sincerely pray from the depths of my heart that God will open our eyes so that our spiritual progress will be accurate and that at the end of our journey we will not have regrets as to why we did not attain the full stature of being spiritual men. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so we have learned a lot of things. And um, I have seen that there is a cancer that is eating believers up. And that cancer in one word is called the flesh. It's a cancer that has been responsible for the downfall of many mighty men. Please open your heart tonight because the Lord is going to talk to you very seriously. Hallelujah. Everyone say the flesh. We're going to examine what is this spiritual cancer that is able to impede people and stop them from becoming spiritual. Grant us grace in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me true and true till my heart becomes a home for you if you know the song just sing it one more time come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. First Corinthians 2 from verse 14. Verse 14. In fact, let's start from verse 13. First Corinthians 2, let's start from verse 13. Which things also we speak, not in the words of man's wisdom, that man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 14. Everyone read. One to read. Stop. So the Bible tells us there is a man called what? The natural man. But the natural man cannot... Receive what? The things of the Spirit. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Are you following me now? So, this is the first kind of man the Bible seeks to explain to us. He is called the natural man. And the Bible gives us certain traits it doesn't leave us in confusion to guess who that man is. It says the natural man is one who has not yet sustained the capacity to understand spiritual things. They are foolishness unto him. He cannot know them because he has not been quickened.
to discern spiritual things. In one word, the natural man is one who has not met Jesus Christ. The natural man is what we call the unbeliever. I don't want to use that word because there are Christians that are still unbelievers. Hallelujah. So the natural man is one who has not met the Lord Jesus Christ. He has not come to the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the way. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. So the natural man is one who has not truly had the encounter of regeneration. The word regeneration comes from the word regene. To record you again. Regene. It's a new encoding. A changing of your spiritual configuration. Hallelujah. That's the first kind of man. And the Bible says for those kinds of people, there is nothing spiritual that ever makes sense to them. Hallelujah. They consider the faith work foolishness. They consider every spiritual activity foolishness. Some of us were like that before Christ found us. Alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. The commonwealth of Zion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything that was of God was, an, it was a thing of mockery. We laughed at spiritual things. This man has an eternal destiny. The name of the place is hellfire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even if this man has been in church all his life, even if his father is a pastor, even if they baptized him in water, for as long as he has not met Jesus Christ, he is going to hell if he dies. Is there any confusion about that? So that we can move forward. Any confusion? The natural man has an eternal destiny. He is going first to hell and will later be relocated to the lake of fire. Hallelujah. That means if you are here and you have not met Jesus Christ, I wish it were a lie, but it's true. You are going to hell. If you don't repent, there is no other way to say it. I'm, I'm very sorry. I would have said you will go to a place that is not nice. It would have been a nice way. But let me tell you the truth and take me seriously. The Bible says this. I am the way. I am the truth. Can we get back to the basics of Christianity? I am the light. Not your pastor. Not your prophet. Not anointing oil. Are you getting what I'm saying? Placing an anointing oil on you does not make you a Christian. Soaking you in water, in baptism does not make you a Christian. I, I, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Because we need to redefine the condition for true salvation. A prophet of God speaking a word over you to say your sins are forgiven does not take you to heaven. Hello? I want all of us to get to heaven. So I want us to probe so that if you belong to this category, 
and your conviction about your being saved is because of some of these things I'm saying. Let's clean up the air so that you will know. There is what we call, they used to teach us in Sunday school, called assurance of salvation. Did they teach you? Not salvation. Assurance of salvation. That you can know that if the trumpet sounds today, by the way, there is a real trumpet and it will sound. Let's be careful as we progress spiritually and we seek to edit some of these things out. I hear men of God who speak and say there's nothing like the book of life. You know that statement? Write my name in the book of life. Yeah, forget it. There's nothing like that. <laughs> we will know one day. But I can tell you there is a book of life. The Bible says books were opened and another book, a master book was opened and the name of that book, it didn't leave us to any theological guessing. He said the name of that book is the book of life. And whosoever's name, pastor, apostle, koinonia member, prayer band member, revivalist, whosoever's name was not found in that book. The Bible tells you that you are cast into the lake of fire. It's as simple as that. What's that man's song? It's your name. In the book of life. Serious question. Is your name. Sing it. Is my name. See let me tell you. You know. There are many believers who think. That your confidence. Is equal to salvation. I won't go to hell. I'm going to heaven. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you are not saved, brothers and sisters, hear me. There is a name for you. The Bible calls you what? The natural man. This is not my message. I'm just digressing to press it in so that you will know and you will care. Brothers and sisters, I know that we have been taught not to scare people with the revelation of judgment that there is judgment day. Don't scare people. So that their coming to Christ will not be out of fear. But the only issue is that it is true. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Heaven and earth will pass away. But not one word, not one word will fail. I really want us to truly, truly, before we even progress, examine our salvation. The Bible says to examine ourselves so that you are sure that if Jesus comes today, he will make heaven. If you know right now that if the trumpet sounds, you are going to heaven, stand up. If you are not sure, no problem. I'm serious. We are not playing games in this place. Please, you know that we are very serious. If you are sure that if the trumpet sounds right now, right now as we speak, you are going, you know, we can fake it. Hallelujah. That if the trumpet sounds now, right now, together, we are going to be with Jesus Christ in the air. That is one of the greatest assurance. You are sure you are going to graduate. But that is inferior to your eternal destiny. You are sure you are going to get married. You are sure you are going to be healed. You are sure you are going to be delivered. But brothers and you are even sure you will be successful. But can I be sincere with you? If you are not sure of your salvation, it's time to deal with it. And I'm going to talk to you. I will tell you what the condition to make heaven is. Please and please, I owe you that responsibility under God. Thank you for giving to the Lord. Keep standing. I am a life that was changed. Thank 
you for giving to the Lord. I am so in the course of ministering. I have had the privilege to stand before people a few minutes before they die. I have had the privilege to comfort families that have been bereaved. Some families of members here. Some families around that I'm connected to. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hold the phone and hear families cry as their loved ones pass on. I've had the opportunity to look at people for the last time. I've had advanced knowledge where God told me this person is not going to make it. He's going to die. The Bible says if our hope is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. If you've never thought about this thing this year, I want you to think about it for one minute. Jesus Christ is truly coming back. Please, in case you have been told that it will not happen, let me guarantee you there is an event that is going to happen in this earth. And every prophecy, every single prophecy that needs to, be, to come to pass for the coming of Jesus Christ has been fulfilled. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it seriously every prophecy. There are people who have had visions of the coming of Christ. There are people who have had visions. I'm just reminding you that there is more to this life, this physical life that you see. And as you walk up and down your daily activity, if you are not sure that if Jesus Christ comes, we will be caught up. Let me tell you how it will happen. Please sit down. Everybody open your Bible. First Thessalonians, please. Paul had a revelation of what is going to happen and I'm going to show you. First Thessalonians 4. We are talking about the natural man. As far as I'm concerned, this is the most important thing. The natural man should know. First Thessalonians 4 from verse 13. 4 verse 13. Please let's hurry up so that we can beat time. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. Everyone look up. It's projected. Paul is talking to the church in Thessalonica. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant. That means part of the revelations of the kingdom Paul wants us to have is the knowledge about how the coming of Christ is going to be. Brethren, so he's speaking to believers, concerning them which are asleep, that's those who have died, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also, which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So Paul is not speaking his opinion. He's speaking by the word of the Lord. That which we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. That means the day that Jesus Christ is going to come, there will still be people who will be alive in the earth. Are you getting me? Not everyone is going to have died as in gone to the grave. So he's giving us, Paul is painting a picture on how the rapture will be. Verse, verse 16. For the Lord himself, for who? The owner of the earth, the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. Now, which of the archangels we are not told exactly. But the Bible tells us 
Paul was speaking that on that day, Jesus himself will descend from the heaven of heavens and will come upon this very physical earth. And it says there will be a shout, the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, that means a trumpet is going to sound. A shofar will blow. And the first thing that will happen in that great ceremony is that the dead in... Everybody say, dead in... One more time. So, it's not only those who are alive in Christ. A man can also be dead in Christ. That he served God with his whole life. And he believed and accepted the lordship of Jesus Christ. I bring you a message of hope. For those of you who have lost loved ones. Brothers and sisters. If they gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a name for them. The Bible says they are dead but in Christ. That means a day will come. There will be a glorious reunion. Hallelujah. So the dead in Christ will be the first to rise. 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall do what? We shall be caught up with them in the clouds. Let me explain to you what will happen. All of this that you see will happen in split seconds. Hallelujah. Split seconds of earth's time. It will be faster than the speed of light. There will be that sound. There's no time I would have shown you that unbelievers are not going to hear that sound. Because he, Jesus gave us a revelation. He said, my sheep hear my voice. That means if you didn't hear it, it was not for you. It's as simple as that. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> the Bible says two people will be lying down. Two roommates in Ribadu will be lying down. And one will be taken and leave the stubborn roommate who is not paying attention to the things of God and things I don't care. You get up and say, uh -uh. where did my roommate go to? We have checked out of this earth. A day is coming. The greatest catastrophe that has happened to the earth is not all of the tsunami and the disappearance. Imagine how many pilots are going to go. You think they will stay? Once you hear that sound, you are leaving. The sound does something to your spirit, man. At once, all the graves... That was the revelation that was adumbrated in Ezekiel 37. People who have been maimed, Jews that were killed by Adolf Hitler, bones that have been scattered, Matthias that were beheaded at once. That sound, that sound will do a quickening. The same way Christ was raised from the dead, the Holy Ghost will demonstrate his sovereignty at its best to resurrect every man who is dead in Christ within a split second. And they will rise up with glorified bodies. Watch this. And that time, some of us who are alive, I pray that it happens during koinonia. While we are seated, maybe we are worshipping. All of a sudden, I will leave my Bible for you my phone. Hallelujah. We we'll leave the drums, keyboard. There will still be a few people seated. And they wonder what is happening. Those who laugh at us right now. And laugh at our fanatism for the kingdom. And think that life is all about money. And cars. And houses. Huh? and marriage and will not give priority to spiritual things. I am not telling you a fairy tale. 
We are closer to the coming of Christ right now than before Koinonia started. And it's a very good news. If it's a bad news for you, you are the natural man. It is not supposed to be a bad news. When people die, we write transition. It's a transition. So we who are alive, all of a sudden, this body that is limited, suddenly, immortality is perfected upon this body. We will no longer carry this material. The clothes that we will wear will no longer be removed. There will be robes. They are called garments of praise. They are garments in the spirit. And we will join the king of kings. His feet is not going to touch the earth. He will stand in, He will come with his own cloud. His own realm. Hmm. And all of a sudden you will see your grandfather. You will see all the missionaries that were wounded in Nigeria. The ones who were killed in Calabar. The ones that were killed in different crises. We see all kinds of things. And together we will arise. And for the first time you will look at the earth. From heaven's perspective. And truly see that it is shadow. Every time we are on the air. I have the privilege to look down and you see houses like, you know how children make toys whereas somebody will say I must build this thing. If not I won't trust you. From heaven's perspective people steal so that they can build that little object. And you see people moving like ants. That is from, from a view in the sky. Imagine how God looks at everyone. And he says, if I don't build this house, oh Lord, you wait. And he's saying, are you not wise? Have you not heard that there are mansions in heaven? It was not a prophetic statement. There are real mansions. There are people who have gone there. There are mansions. There are mansions. We will be caught up. We will leave all the countries. They will elect themselves. They will fight themselves. There will be a lot of vacancy. ABU Senate. No more admission. Some of your lecturers will come for lecture that morning. Only to find out that CNN. Will carry the most shocking news. Ever seen in human history. This day. Will put it new Nigeria, punch this nation, massive disappearance of people. All of a sudden, it will occur to those you preach to who laughed at you that this, this person said this. By the time they are saying it, we will wave this earth goodbye. I look forward to that time, it's a very good experience. Do you know what it means that you are relieved from this body of sorrow? No thinking about all of these kinds of things. It's making some of you afraid because preachers have run away from it because they are not sure they are going to heaven. Don't talk about it. We are already going. We must talk about it. You talk about your house you are hoping for break or strike or something so that you will run home. This world is not my home. Remember that country music. Powerful songs. Right now we dodge them. We sing all kinds of songs. I must make it. God is holding my hand and I must make it. These are the kinds of songs we write. Nothing at all that reminds us that we are leaving this realm. This is already a message. For someone, this is, your, this is your word from the Lord tonight. That you should sit down and think about your life. I can stand as a preacher and deceive men. But on that day, all of a sudden you will see bishops and pastors still in the earth. And the members will say, Pastor, you say, please don't. The Bible will once again become 
the best seller. Because every body, whether you believe in Christ or not, it will no longer be an instrument of devotion. It will be the roadmap for the next level of prophecy. Every church on earth will be jam-packed. At that point, every business will close their shop by force. When there is nobody you must, whether you are selling tire, whether you are an iron bender, whatever you are doing, you will pack up your business and run to church. And everybody will sit in church hoping that that is the place where the rapture will happen, whereas it has happened. All of a sudden, within 24 hours, a strange man will appear on your TV. And you say, world, calm down. It's true that some people have gone, but let there be peace. And the Bible calls him the Antichrist. Not an Antichrist. He is the Antichrist. At that point, the Bible says, men will run and beg the mountain to fall on them. You are afraid of bicycle hitting your leg. But the Bible says even death will run away. Death will say, I've tried. That's it. Mission accomplished. Yes, read your Bible. Men will run to the mountain. People will carry knives to kill themselves and will not die. The Bible says the, in Revelation, I thought we'll be able to do it this year, but we may do it. We may not be able to do it this year. Eschatology, there is a whole teaching on it. A four-part series on the end time. Hallelujah. I'm just giving you, am I boring you? <laughs> you better say no because this cannot be boring when your eternal destiny is tied to it. Some of us, this is a revelation. God has been talking to you. Calm down with the issue of wanting to make it and think about your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Churches will still be full. There will still be men of God doing live telecasts, whereas the rapture has happened. Some will even be making altar calls. I mean what I'm saying, and I'm very serious about it. Yet there are some people, some quiet mothers, who have been praying, like Anna, the prophetess, looking forward to the consolation. When that happens, some of the cleaners in our churches who we have disrespected. Before you know it, they will leave the rag for you there and leave. Some of the house helps we have ill-treated, they will go and leave all of us. The door of CBN will be wide open to go and pack all the money. All the security people, the banks will be there. The bulk room will be open. Go and pack. And then you will hear that there is a new technology for buying and selling the Antichrist will introduce a new code of conduct. Joshua Selman! For where? Yes, God. And I will turn there and I'll see Lawrence. I'll say, You made it. Oh, I pray that you will turn and see your father, your mother, and you say, Where is my sister? And there will be joy. No matter how antisocial you are, there must be joy. Because you will turn and see someone and you will suddenly turn and see the person who led you to Christ but has died. And you will look at him. And we will all be young. No competition of I'm fine, you are not. We will all be fine. Leave this body with all the deficiencies that this realm brought for us. And we will arise in a glorified body. Question. Will your father be there? Will your mother be there? Yes, you may be there. There are people in my life, I'm sorry to say it, I know they will not be there. Based on the truth of God's word, they died without Jesus Christ. Some of them, we had the privilege to talk to them. And they didn't take it seriously. And they died. There are people you spoke to. They didn't know that you were so close. And they didn't listen. And they died. With my mouth will I make it known. That's why we have to preach. From the rising of the sun right until it's going down. I will sing 
of the mercies of the Lord. There will be churches that more than half of the congregation will be dancing and singing praise and worship. And they are not gone. Because they never took seriously the issue of salvation. They thought it's a basic thing. There will even be men of God sharing revelations. And all of a sudden they will find out that the earth looks empty. The weight of the earth will reduce because people have left. Revelation says that there was 30 minute silence in heaven. You know why? The, the shock in heaven because of the seven vials that was about to be poured upon the earth. The Bible says one third of the vegetation of the earth will be destroyed. You were taught about ecosystems, right, in biology. Imagine what happens to the earth when one third of the vegetation is destroyed. It's not a prophetic statement. It will happen. No buying Indomie until the mark of the beast is there. No nothing. No matter how you hide. We have GPS. What do they call it? GPRS. GPS, they will find you. No hiding. The question I want to ask you right now, again, is, are you going to make it? This is not to scare you. What then is the condition to make heaven? What condition transits you from being a sinner To being a righteous person in Christ. Romans chapter 8. Sorry chapter 10. I'll begin to read from verse 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Here's the condition. That if thou shalt what? Confess. Not assume, confess, verbalize with your mouth the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And if you believe it, that means it is possible to confess what you do not believe. Is that true? So, you must first believe in your heart that this is true. Jesus came and died. He shed his blood for my sins. He was given as a propitiation, as an exchange. What I could not do for myself. Jesus came as the ransom. The lamb that shed his blood for my sins. He said if you believe in the Lord Jesus. And thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. What is the, the result? Thou shalt be saved. Next verse. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And then with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. Has this happened to you? I know you have spoken. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe you died. I believe you died. And you are pinching people all around. The Bible says, do you believe in your heart? Was it a sincere statement? Do you truly believe that Jesus died? Do you believe that he shed his blood? He took your place in death. That you may take his place in life. Do you believe that he defeated sin? He defeated Satan? He broke the power of sin. Do you believe that he offers you new life? And if you believe it, have you acknowledged it? If you have not done that, if Jesus comes today, you are going to hellfire. 
Hallelujah. So before we continue, I'm going to give us five minutes. And I'd like us to pray from the depths of your heart, every one of us, and say, Lord, I commit myself. Commit myself. I want to be sure that on this day, this decision is true in my life. Jesus, Son of God. Pray. I believe in you. I believe in you. I call you my Messiah. Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. Pray from the depths of your heart. I believe that Jesus died. Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. Oh, I believe. I believe in life and in death. This becomes my conviction. Jesus, Son of God. I may not believe many things about the Christian faith, but I believe this one. Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. With my heart, I believe that Jesus died. Jesus paid the price. I believe the truth of God's word. I believe that Jesus came. He was born of the Virgin Mary. I believe that he suffered. I believe that he went to the cross. I believe he hung on that cross for me. I believe that he was pierced with those nails for my sins I believe he said it is finished I believe he was buried and he went to hell and collected the keys of death, hell and the grave I believe that on the third day he resurrected I believe that he's alive today and he offers me the gift of righteousness oh and I've received it by faith Jesus, Son of God, the most important decision in your life when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder 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 when the road When the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. In two minutes, I'd like you to cry for your family members that you know, you know they are going to hell. Lift your voice and pray. Don't pretend it. Some of us, our kind fathers are still going to hell. When all is said and done, when all is said and done, your degree means nothing. Your prosperity means nothing. When all is said and done, when all is said and done, there are some of our sisters going to hell. Brothers, our relatives, kind cousins, well-meaning family members. But as it is right now, the truth of God's word is that they are going to hell. Pray for them. 
Lord, save them. Save them. Save them. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Whether you believe it or not, Jesus is coming. Please pray for them in one minute. I know we've taken time, but this is too important. What then are we doing? Save their soul, oh God. Save their soul. Please pray for your father. Lord, let him not go to hell. Now that he's alive, there is still a chance. Pray for your drunkard brother. Lord, you have to do something about his salvation. Pray for your idol worshipping grandparents. Lord, they are kind. They love me. But they are going to hell. Save them, oh God. Are you praying? Let me tell you, if this is all we do tonight, it is important. There is nothing that stops Jesus Christ from coming this night. The gospel of the kingdom is already being preached. There is nothing that stops Jesus Christ from coming tomorrow morning. Hallelujah. The last prayer point before we continue. Listen, look at me. I want to say something and I mean it from the depths of my heart. There are some of you here, the blood of your family members and your friends will be upon your head because you move around, you know Jesus and you love him, but you are afraid and ashamed. You don't want stigmatization. How can me, a fine girl, be involved in preaching? How can me a bubble? All right, they are going to die. That's the problem. It has nothing with you being a preacher. And let me tell you, the Bible tells us that the rich man was in hell and he saw Lazarus. They communicated. You will be able to see your father and your mother. They will look at you. You will look at your roommates. You will look at people. You will see them. Let me tell you the truth. And they are going to ask you. They will say, Femi, you saw this thing. You didn't insist. You even asked me out. Yet you never preached to me. You taught me about prosperity. You taught me. Many of us who are preachers here. The blood of many people will be upon our heads. We taught about dimensions of revival. We taught about divine health. Rema, we healed the sick. There were all kinds of demonstrations of the spirit. But they, we did not confirm whether our members are going to make it. We had building projects. Project 10,000. Excellence. There was table. You cut cake. We dress well in suit. But the question is, in the final analysis, are you preaching to anybody? There are some of you, you have never opened your mouth to talk to anybody. You can share about revelation. You can share about marriage. You can give koinonia messages. You're on Facebook. You're on Twitter. You have all kinds of things. God gave you an opportunity. You have recharge card. Let me tell you something. In 2000, and was it three or four? I used to do something. I will never sleep until I send text messages to at least 10 or 15 people talking to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know them. I would just be calling numbers at random. I think that was when 2003, 4. That was when they started this GSM thing. I would just type in numbers at random and send. Just type a message about salvation. Not a condemning message, but a sincere message. 
There are some of you, you can make tracks. You are waiting until the day you become a Jew. Some of us, our Facebook pages have become platforms for, for gossiping and making all kinds of noise. Yet our loved ones are going to hell. You are interested in a relationship with a lady. You don't even know whether she's going to heaven or hell. All you know is she's fine. Continue. Hallelujah. And you are there. God gave you beauty. All kinds of guys are coming. You don't want to fall your hand. And you never talk to them about Jesus Christ. Some of you get up and you allow people. You come for coin on You just say, I'm going. And they say, okay. And it never occurs to you that if you come for coin on and the trumpet sounds, you will never see them again. You have no ministry if souls are not being saved. You are not doing ministry. I don't care what you are doing. Our number one assignment is part of our mission statement. Massive salvation of souls. Not salvation of souls. Massive salvation of souls. When I see a man that needs to hear about Jesus and God grants me the grace, I will speak. If I cannot speak, I will do something. What is wrong with you going to the studio and going to pay 10 or 20,000 naira and just do a salvation message? You are not the name of any ministry. You say, what is the name of my own ministry? Must you have a ministry? Just go to the studio and do it a 20 minutes presentation of salvation. Or you and your friends contribute two, 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 two thousand, five or ten people, and just put it as an MP3. We put all kinds of useless things. Um, this is Joshua Selman. I'm about to release my debut track, Nonsense, when there is room to preach the gospel first. How many of our gospel songs? carry direct salvation messages have you seen have you discovered the way we are quietly deviating and nobody wants to attack the salvation thing it looks old school right it doesn't look very attractive so i rather push success i'm not against success brothers and sisters but i repeat if jesus comes nobody is carrying a kaki out of this realm are you are, are you are you aware of that you are not going to carry any shirt. All of these things, you will drop it behind. Whatever you have in your account is useless. You won't carry your awards. You won't carry your degree. You won't carry your marriage certificate. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. This is what drives me every day. I have dedicated my life not just for ministry to turn the hearts of many to righteousness i don't care how much i'm misunderstood i don't care how old school i sound when jesus comes in the final analysis some of you are fellowship escorts some of you are pastors when was the last time you truly preached do you know that we graduate people from bible school and they don't know what the gospel is they know the keys to wealth. They understand marriage counseling, conflict resolution, how to raise money for church, but they know nothing about winning souls. One more time before I continue. I've, this thing has touched my heart. This thing has touched my heart because this is the core, the pivot, the pivot. Of our Christian experience. If God makes you a millionaire. And nobody is getting saved as a result of your millions. You will eat your money the day the church is raptured. If God gives you a platform. You have your small fellowship. Your group. And you just feel we are only five. I think everybody is born again. Don't make assumptions. That's why I respect Papa E.E. Adeboye. If he holds a meeting between him and his wife, I'm sure he will still make an altar call. No assumption. 
No assumption. We preach powerful messages. And at the end of it, we don't care whether people are saved or not. One more time. Put a fire in my spirit. Let my mouth not be silent as far as preaching the gospel. Telling people that Jesus died for them and that there is judgment if they don't pay attention. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Some of you truly, when you started out with God, you were very serious as far as soul winning is concerned. You didn't even know that there was anything called anointing. But now you know that there is anointing. I will use everything that God has given me for the gospel. Pray. Prosperity. Grace. The knowledge of graphics, my knowledge of media, my beauty. Sister, pray. Tired of taking men to hell. Now I need to begin to take men to heaven. I will use my voice to sing. And I will keep singing until people come to Jesus Christ. Many of you need to repent on behalf of your groups and ministries. Open your mouth and ask the Lord for forgiveness. You've been doing a lot of activities, but they are not channeled towards soul winning. And you don't care. Open your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, my small fellowship in the village have not been preaching the gospel. I've been preaching many things. Not the gospel of salvation. Every other gospel is only useless or useful when the gospel of salvation has been preached. Some of us have little groups that we preach to occasionally. Where did you throw your evangelism zeal? It looked old school and you've thrown it for something new. The Bible says, ask for the ancient part. Please pray. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. Don't let my love Roll cold, I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I just feel God wants us to stop here and press on this issue tonight. Carnal believers and the rest, we have to go we'll take on that one. Hallelujah. Whether you are going to kneel down or lie down in the next 10 minutes, I'd like you to write the names of five people that were going to intercede for their salvation. If this is what we do tonight, go ahead and pray. Please cry to God. They must be saved. Man braba teke lebo ko soto balararaba. Raba teke proske de balararabosh. The natural man. I'm crying now. Write it. There is no man that Jesus cannot save. For as long as there is life, there is hope. Shake the balalalalalala, bossy, bossy, balalalalala, bira, na, 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 bossy, balalala, yeah. Bira, bossy, sobra, na, 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 na,
all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. But it's all about you. Please write it down. All about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. 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 It's all about you, Jesus. Jesus. In the next five minutes, I like you to pray in tongues like your life depends on it and say lord these five people must be saved i must see them in heaven lift your voice and begin to pray whether you want to kneel down cry whatever it is let there be a cry they must be born again Rapakata preske pete gede balarara rabash. Rakapo shoto pekete le prekete le koto supa. My father will not go to hell. My father will not go to hell. My mother will not go to hell. Pray. Save my husband. Save my wife. Pray. When the trumpet sounds, I must see them in heaven. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. They must be saved. They may be non Christians, but I travel. They must be saved. Yeah, 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 Revelations 20. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord is imparting a genuine passion for souls. Yeah, yeah. Revelations 20. From verse 10. Revelations 20, verse 10. listen listen and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are and shall be tormented day and night forever next verse and i saw a great white throne i saw it i saw it and he that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was no place found for them verse 12 i don't know what gospel you have been heard you have been preaching i saw the dead small and great commissioners 
and house boys, presidents and bike men, first class students and those who did not pass jam. I saw them. I saw them. They stood before God. Every man must stand before God. And the books were open. What books? Your faithfulness in evangelism. Your giving. For those who have taught you that your works of righteousness are not important. Here goes the Bible. The works of men will be tried by fire. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Brothers and sisters, read the remaining part by yourself one to read and the dead were judged out of that means there are things that are written according to what next verse and the sea gave up all the people who died by sea crash and death and hell delivered all our uncles and aunties and politicians. It says, and they were judged, every man according to their works. 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And the Bible says, this is the second death. Let me show you something. Is there another verse? Go ahead. Verse 15. Everyone read. And hold on. And what? Whosoever. At that point, your status will not matter again. At that point, your English, your ordination will not matter. Your suit will not bail you out. He said, whosoever was not found written in the book of life, there was no story, end of discussion, cast into the lake of fire. Whether it is your father, whether it is your mother, some of you, if you don't pray, you will watch your mother who gave birth to you. You will watch her, as the Bible says, depart from me. And you will watch them cry to hell. Some of you will watch your uncles lift your voice and cry. And say, Lord, whatever it will take to stop them from going to this place of torment, I cry tonight. I love them too much. I love my mother. I love my father. I love my brothers. Yeah. Whosoever's name was not found in the book of life, be it a president, be it a governor, whether you are a first class student, two one student, it will not matter again. It won't matter how many parishes you have. It won't matter how many rema you have. Hey, 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 hey. Whether you are a member of Koinonia or not is irrelevant. I will stand for myself. You will stand for yourself. And I saw books open, and another book was open. Yeah, 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 yeah. Intercede for them, Lord. Send angels 
send angels to my house send angels give them dreams give them encounters with Jesus in their dreams they must be born again yeah. Yeah. When all is said and done When all is said and done This is all that will matter Yeah 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 Revelations 21 Verse 3 a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God verse 4 and God finally brothers and sisters a day will come when all is said and done in this life God will wipe away the tears the tears of mockery some people died out of cancer some died out of hiv some were martyred they were standing for jesus while they were killed the bible says on that day that tears the tears of mockery holy holy the lord will wipe that tears the tears of the pain that you have to go through on account of the gospel that men will not like you some of you would have been married since if you were not standing for God. But because of your faith, the Bible says God will wipe that tears and there shall be no more death, no more obituary, no more pain, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Listen. Listen. It's not enough that you are convinced that you will make heaven. I'm still saying it. We are going to pray. There are some of our loved ones, some of us come from backgrounds that are non-Christians. And some of our loved ones are still there. You are going to pray. And everyone will pray too. Give them divine visitations. Encounters with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, if Jesus came to die, an encounter is not too much. To force any man to give his life to Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Encounters. Appear to them in visions. Like Saul on his way to Damascus. Lord, they will not die. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Rakata pakata pados. Pray, change my father, 
changed my mother some of them vowed that they will never give their hearts to the Lord I like you to pray it can change some of them are traditional worshippers mention them by name mention them by name read your prayer request mention them by name mention them by name claim their salvation in the name of Jesus some of them are religious people the truth is they are not born again they are not born again Some of them belong to sects that will take them to hell. Occultic sects. Pray for them. Give them an encounter. Hallelujah. hallelujah I'll never forget one of our sisters she was a member of the worship team hallelujah I will never forget her touching testimony came from a completely non-christian background and she decided to give her life to Christ when she gave her life to Christ it was war and gradually gradually the Lord started doing his thing in the family the brother gave his life to Christ and then I think the mother and it was remaining the father and this lady would not give up I will never forget that night when she called me crying and jumping around chapel and say can you imagine my father my father gave his life to Christ she was jumping see there are some hardened people you see. You know that humanly speaking, they will never be born again. Don't try the power of the Holy Spirit. Think of how you were. Some of you think of what God brought you out of. Then you will know that there is no man that God cannot change. There is no man. God has changed occultists. God has changed hardened criminals. Some of you, you know where God brought you out from. If God could change you, if God could change you, we are still going to pray. You are going to say, Lord, put your word in my mouth. Because some of you, it's just, you don't know what to say. But we are going to cry. Lord, let no one's blood be upon my head on that day. Put your word in my mouth. And grant me the boldness to declare the gospel. Go ahead and pray. your word in my mouth pray deliver me from shame deliver me from my ego deliver me from embarrassment hey 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 are you praying from the depths of your heart? You must start with your family members before you think of crusades and outreaches. Start with your family members. They must be born again. They must be born again. Hallelujah. 
Listen. Listen. There are many avenues. Many avenues to turn the hearts of men to righteousness. Number one, the ministry of intercession. There are some of you who pray a lot, but all you are praying is, oh God, give me tea. God, give me bread. Add blue ban on the bread. That's, that's all our prayer. If, if, listen, if the scope of your Christian experience, there's, we'll do it another day. I really wanted to talk about the carnal man. And then we, there, there are scriptures that I prepare to touch. We can't, we can't do that. Our time is already gone. The slave to the flesh. That is the man of the flesh that can really not please God. That is another dimension. Maybe we'll consider that next week. Hallelujah. That you, you, you write the names of people and you're just going to fasting for one day and it's not for yourself. How many of you have ever done that? To fast and it's not for yourself. If it's not for me, that's the flesh. That's the flesh. If it's not for my marriage, my, my lifting, my prosperity. Or that you go to prayer and say, Lord, you must save these souls. And you are not just pretending it. One thing that I know is that as much as God grants me grace and bread, no one's blood will be upon my head that day. No one will look at me and say, Joshua Selman, you had access to me, but you never spoke to me about Jesus. Do you know, listen, do you know what the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees said? They said, let his blood be on our head. Who taught them that principle? That the blood of a man can be upon the head of another. And that God would look and say, Ken, I gave you access. I gave you graces. And you ended up building an empire. MOG. They invited you to travel around the world. They gave you water, ushers around. And you never, you were not concerned about the souls of men. There are men who will carry the blood of others on their head. Hallelujah. Oh, I must preach. Necessity is laid upon me. Some of us, the only reason why we cannot, I'm not talking of condemning people, but I'm talking of being passionate enough to trust God. Tell them what Jesus did in your life. There are some of you, you have never invited anybody to church, not once, the way you are like this. You don't care. It's not an issue at all. Yet we sing and we say, Lord, I love you. Yet we sing and we say, someday I'm going home. The Lord is speaking to us tonight. The Bible says the harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. He said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers. When Jesus came, he gave his assignment a business-like attitude. He said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me. Hallelujah. We just came back from a trip. And when I came, I couldn't even rest just to do everything and to come here. Now, why all of this thing? Our flight was delayed. There were so many things. These guys have been tired. We left Bene Republic this morning by 5 a.m. in the morning. Headed to the airport, our flight was shifted. And I can justify and say, Kite, God, you too, you know. But Paul said the love. He said, I, Paul, a bond servant. It looks like I'm in slavery, but no one is forcing me. There is love that constrains me. Little inconveniences for some of us. Little inconveniences for the kingdom. And we complain. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not against comfort. But I'm telling you, if it is because you want to be comfortable that you allow souls to die and you don't make spiritual progress, their blood will be on your head. 
tomorrow morning we are up teaching school of ministry students from there we're headed to zamfara coming back monday morning straight into the counseling session why am i doing all this am i stupid or i don't know where a retreat center is that i can just go and lie down and say let me rest what drives you my brothers and my sisters please don't say you are a ministry no what is it that when you get up in the morning truly please take seriously what i'm saying what drives you what drives you power or fame what drives your christian experience There are some of you, those around you, it's not like they are hardened. Nobody has preached to them. They've been coming to church. You know they are not born again. You know they are not born again. Religion is not being born again. If they are not saved, they are not saved. Period. It's time to talk to them and tell them, I, I want to talk to you. Is it too much? to pay and invite them to a restaurant and talk to them about Jesus Christ. Can your 500 naira not go for the gospel? Will it kill you? Will it kill you? What is wrong with three or four of you coming and just praying for three days, just praying and fasting, no group, no ministry, no nothing, just to pray for souls genuinely, ask people to submit the names of their unsaved ones, and pray after three days that's all jesus said if you do this to the least of my brethren see let me tell you the day jesus comes we are going to be surprised because those you think are the greatest in the kingdom you will be shocked to find out that they are not the greatest some of us the men of god that you think will be the greatest you will be surprised that some of us who have just barely made heaven whereas there are people whose end entire life they don't have revelation they don't have any rema nobody's inviting them for any ministration but their heart in life and in death has been committed towards the gospel there are classmates of us that have never heard about jesus christ we are ashamed sometimes when i pass through abu campus i look at the campus and i nod my head things have changed Things have changed. The fire. Many of us are afraid to talk to people about Jesus. Okay, agree that you cannot go for all the crusades and the rest. What of your family members? You grew up knowing your father drinking and smoking and bowing to a God. Have you ever said, Daddy, there's something I want to discuss with you? Say, my father that I know as if you don't know the Holy Spirit too. What if I talk to him and he insults me? Is that the reason why you will not talk? What if I talk to him and he stops giving me uh, pocket money? What if I tell the brother that this relationship is not born again and let me talk to him about Jesus Christ. Won't it cost me the relationship? I want to marry. Okay, marry. There are some of us, as you are looking at me right now, even those you are in a relationship with are unbelievers. They are going to hell. You don't care. Who is he? He's a nice guy. Is he born again? Eh, please, everybody is a sinner. If he's a sinner, he's a sinner. Your priority is not love. Your priority is salvation. Please hear what I'm saying. Because on that day, the Lord is going to ask you. Praise the Lord. One last prayer point. Lord, whatever I can do at this level to contribute to the advancement of the kingdom and soul winning, reveal it to me. Whatever I can do, if you can't preach, you can sow seeds. Please pray. Everybody must do something. What can I do for my family? Do I need to organize a get-together? Do I need to celebrate my father's birthday for him so that he will be saved? What can I do at this level? Do I need to buy a card? Do I need to write an article for my family members? 
do I need to produce tract? What can I do at this level? Don't say I cannot do anything. With the grace you have, there's something you can do. Please pray. Lord, you gave me a voice. I can sing with it. You gave me wisdom. I can use that as a platform. Lord, you bless me with finances. I can release my wealth for the kingdom. Lord, you gave me a car. My car can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a Babin saloon. It can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a restaurant. It can be used for the kingdom. Reveal to me what I can do at this level. It may not be much. But let me contribute. There's something I can do. I can pray. I can preach. I can finance the kingdom. Listen to me. I can go on my knees and beg you. Don't make this just an emotional thing. It's easy to just feel emotional and just say, wow, because I spoke about hellfire and rapture and books. It's easy for you to be threatened and then just carry the euphoria for one or two days and it dies back. Take this as a message God is giving you. No matter what you have done in ministry, if souls are not being saved, you are wasting God's time. Hallelujah. Please rise up and lift. If you wrote your prayer, your request, if it's in a book, just lift it up. I want to pray on it. Listen. You are the first agent that will follow up these people. Don't just pray for an anonymous man of God to evolve from anywhere. You are the man of God that God is authorizing tonight to start. Don't fear their faces. I'm not saying you should go and do stupid things without zeal. Or with zeal and without knowledge. Just jump into people's houses and inconvenience them. Start with your family members. Your family members will not kill you. At least you can start from there. Father, we repent in any way we have trivialized the issue of soul winning. And Lord, we know that this is in your heart and you decided to move us this direction. We want your heartbeat to become our heartbeat. We want your cry to become our cry. We want your passion to become our passion. Put a piece of your desire for souls in our hearts. And let it be a fire that nothing in this life can quench. Oh, we desire you. We desire you. Put that passion Lord, I stretch my hands towards these names. There are so many people who are going to hell whose names are written. Some of them are fathers, some are mothers. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we agree as a family of faith that beginning from tonight, let there be strength.
strange angelic visitations strange angelic visitation force them to go for crusades may they go for meetings may they encounter men and women of god and lord we pray especially for those who are not of the christian faith lord you know that humanly speaking their minds are made up but in the name of jesus christ i pray angelic visitations encounters of jesus christ as they sleep they will see his face as they sleep they will see his face in the name of jesus christ as they sleep they will see the cross they will see the cross it will follow them everywhere they go we ransom their souls from the pit of hell lord we will not stand in heaven and watch our loved ones enter that wide gate of hell we will stand and we will rejoice put a passion in us to win souls let it not just be a religious evangelical thing lord remind us that if we do not win these souls and we let them die that their blood will be upon our heads i pray for everyone i kill timidity from your life whatever makes you ashamed of the gospel i don't care what it is whether your inability to communicate well your poor background complex that you have about yourself that 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 limitation is swallowed up tonight in the name of jesus may my god give you utterance may my god give you utterance may my god give you confidence in the name of jesus christ and i pray that you will not win souls and miss heaven yourself i pray for everyone that the same way we are gathered in the earth like this that is how we will see ourselves on that day we will see ourselves and know ourselves therefore i pray any manner of life represented here listen to me any manner of life that the devil is deceiving anyone into and making it look like it does not matter tonight that power of sin is broken over your life every association every wrong thing that can jeopardize your eternal destiny in the name of jesus christ receive grace to say no to every appearance of evil receive no to receive grace to say no to wicked and ungodly relationships receive grace to cut away from people who do not love god nor value his ways in the name of jesus christ and where you need to stand alone receive courage to stand alone where they mock you and say all kinds of things i release grace for you to still stand i pray for you from the depths of my heart that every weight every habit every attitude you know that can destroy your christian experience and rob you of the opportunity i don't care what it is and how long it has been in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray that that life of pretense dies tonight and i pray for those of you who have been doing things both great and small for the kingdom grace to continue i pray specifically for all the workers in this house i want you to know that your contributions to advancing the kingdom the worship department the ushers one day you will see this record in heaven and the lord will say this is what you did on earth for my kingdom and for those of us who are not serious with the house of god not the things of god we are just careless 
there is no kind of commitment that you have you don't give for in the house of god you don't pray you don't support the cause of the kingdom i pray tonight that god will speak to you yeah. and that for the first time for some of us you will say enough of lukewarm christianity it's time to plunge in and commit myself truly in the name of jesus christ for some of you who have been wounded on account of the gospel you have been misunderstood on account of the gospel i pray for you there is a bam in gilead there are some of us who have been persecuted because of the gospel you have been blackmailed because of your christian integrity i speak to you do not give up a day of reward is coming there is one who is called the rewarder of them that diligently seek him you are suffering financially today if only you compromise on your Christian integrity, that man would have given you money. Now the money is not there, but he's telling on you. I want you to know that the Lord is proud of you. He is watching. A day of reward and recompense is coming. It's coming. It's coming. Beauty that makes this whole earth adore you. Home spent with you. We'll just sing this song once. Here I am to here I am to buy. One more time. Here I am. message for you tonight is to live with eternity in view whatever you need to do to remind yourself I want you to remind yourself life does not end here life do, I want this is the message to you the personal word of the Lord to you that there is more live your life knowing that you will give account of it don't live your life as if you own your, yourself. Live your life as you joke, as you play, huh? as you go around your normal activity. Remind yourself that a day is coming when all that we see today will be no more. Let it not scare you, but it serves as a buffer solution. It will check balance excesses in your life and it will keep you hot for the kingdom. Many people in their discoveries of spiritual things as they seek to understand the truth of scripture because the Bible says in the end time knowledge shall increase. So people are exploring spiritual things and many people are beginning to come up with the concept and and. The verse that we use is Matthew 6 from verse 10 and 11. The Bible says, let it be done in the earth as it is in. Is that true? That tells us that God's idea is that earth should be a replica of the heavens. And that is very true. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That is God's idea. This is why even at the rapture, we will go to heaven and we will still return back to a new heaven and a new earth. Revelations 19, 20 and 21 talks about the new heaven. He said, he said come and I will show you the bride.
the lamb's wife he said and he took me and i saw a city a heavenly jerusalem coming down and then it lists the kinds of people who will not be allowed to enter that city however please listen however there is a movement right now that is beginning to build upon this concept of god's idea to want heaven on earth a lot of people are already preaching right now that there is no place called heaven again that the heaven has already come to the earth and anybody who is thinking that he will go and meet god in heaven is wasting his time that is an error from the pit of hell are you getting me now for you to deny the fact that there is a location called heaven where christ is seated remember the bible tells us that stephen in scripture i want to rush are you are you following me now i want to show you the scriptural proof remember when they were about to stone stephen the Messiah? what did he see the bible says he saw the heavens open is that true and he saw who god was sitting on a throne not roaming around sitting on a definite throne and he saw jesus christ standing by his right hand side is that true this also proves the concept of the trinity let me digress a little now if you study theology listen if you study theology there are certain there are certain words that we use that are not in the bible for instance you don't find the word trinity in the bible is that true you don't find the word rapture in the bible are you following me now and certain theologians in their quest to explore truth without the help of the holy spirit have come up with certain things for instance the bible says hear ye o israel the lord our god is one god and a lot of people say forget it there is only one god anywhere the concept of the holy spirit is an error the concept of a father and a son is an error but the word one there in hebrew is plural just like the bible says in the beginning god the the hebrew word there is elohim elohim is plural the singular is eloha so in the beginning god the entire entity of the godhead made um, you know they created the heavens and the earth are you getting it now this absence of understanding truth with the agency of the holy spirit led men now to say oh there is one god in terms of just one person there is no jesus there is no anything like the holy spirit you know and so on and so forth and it has brought a lot of error so i am showing you i'm going to show you in two places because scripture says in the mouth or two or three witnesses is any matter established is that true number one proof of the trinity remember in the baptism of jesus christ so we see the word who is the second person of the trinity there and john is about to baptize him is that true the bible says as soon as he came out of the water what happened the heavens were opened again that means the holy ghost came from heaven not from a grave is that true the holy ghost came resting upon him we see another entity of the trinity and there was a voice from a separate entity saying this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him have you gotten that now you go to the book of acts where stephen is about to be matthias and the bible says stephen full of the holy ghost that means the holy ghost was in him is that true he looks to heaven and he sees god the father sitting a separate individual entity and jesus in another throne separate and distinct so don't you let anybody tell you that the concept of trinity does not exist let me give you one more scripture are you ready genesis 1 26 we are going to read the first six words there genesis 1 26 or the first five words really are you ready one to read and god said let it didn't say let me and god said let 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 us who are the other people and eloha that's the word there one of the trinity said let us together make this entity called adam man 
Hallelujah. Very important. While Jesus walked upon the earth, he was full of the Holy Ghost. Is that true? Yet he kept talking about his father. He kept talking about his father. He kept talking about someone else that was not him. Remember, he said that it is expedient that I go. For if I do not go, the comforter will not come. And he said the comforter will proceed from the father. He will take off what is of the father and reveal it to you. Hallelujah. It's a lot of erroneous teachings. So anyway, let's go back to our heaven on earth. So heaven on earth is a reality in that, listen please, let me explain to you the concept of heaven on earth as far as the church age is concerned. When the Bible says in his prayer, Jesus teaching the disciples, hallelujah, he said, let it be done in the earth. As it is in heavens in in other words i want my life my character my culture my value system are you are you following me now the same way it is in the heavens to be reproduced in the earth it does not literally mean take the heavens in all its fair and put there the reason is because there are some things in the earth realm that are not in heaven for instance there are no physical bodies in heaven the bodies in heaven are not made of clay. Are you following me now? The bodies in heaven are made of spiritual substances and lightning. For instance, the angels. The angels were created from light. The light that strikes in your thunder. That was the material of their creation. Are you following me now? This is why Jesus looked at Satan and said, I saw Satan like light falling and the bible says satan can translate himself as an angel of light something happened to his configuration when he fell there was a corruption that happened to him so he's no longer in his perfect state when you looked at satan at the creation that's before genesis 1 verse 2 when you looked at satan you will see objects of worship was used in his creation he was not only among the highest angelic keda are you following me now satan was the chief of all the angels and because he stood near god there was a rub off of god's glory on him the same thing happened to moses when moses stood near god what happened so imagine how much satan was bright because he had been ministering in the presence of god for a long time it was that brightness that made even other angels admire him and one day he said to himself can i not exalt myself above the stars of god so he had a movement to dethrone god hallelujah and satan alongside other angels leviathan apollyon there's no time I would have shown you from scripture. These were the spirits that came together. Satan did not lead the rebellion alone. No single man. The Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that one third of the angel joined Satan's party and together they all fell. One third of the entire angelic host. They are the disembodied spirits we call demons today. This is why their operation in the earth realm is illegal. Are you getting me now? Because their body was not designed to function in the earth realm. Please, are, are you getting what I'm saying now? So, they can downgrade themselves. This is why there are angels that can appear in human form. They are called ministering spirits. Are you getting me now? These are the angels that can appear somewhat have how many of you have had these kinds of encounters that someone came to or had testimonies that somebody came to rescue another person having a material body but they didn't see the person again these are ministering spirits i've had one of those encounters i've shared it how that one time i was in abuja we had maraba and i came down from a bus and left my wallet there hallelujah when I left my wallet, I just realized that the bus had gone. It was a busy market. I didn't even know how I was going to get that. And then Manasseh took a bike to run and go and look for the bus person. While he was going, there was no hope. The next thing, I just saw a man limping with my wallet. And he came and gave it to me. That was it. 
real solid experience many of you have seen them you thought it was your brother they can carry somebody can call you and talk to you you will call the person back later you say i cannot remember calling you these angels are they are, they are the the manifest the bible says are they not ministering spirit sent to minister to serve they that be the heirs of salvation they are the ones that lead people to meetings sometimes they just come and knock and you think it was the same person whereas that person has gone has come for koinonia already some of them come in the midst of this there are times i see them when the lord opens my eyes to see somebody's case then you see oftentimes the moment i see them they stand up quietly and walk they have been around they are here right now scattered around not everybody you see here is a human being be shouting at people <laughs> you see why it's good to be well behaved in church hallelujah so heaven on earth there is a place called heaven and there is a place called earth and listen a time will come when there will be a new heaven and a new earth that time will not happen in the church age are you getting me please don't confuse yourself at all there is the dispensation of the church age in the book of revelation Daniel, I mean, um, um, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and certain things were revealed to him. Is that true? And he said, right, the things that were, what are the things that were? The things that have happened in creation until the dispensation of the church age. The things that are, are the things that are encapsulated prophetically in the seven churches. It represents the seven dispensation of the church age. And then from revelations chapter 4 he now told him come up hither and i will show you i want to start revealing to you the things that will happen after the dispensation of the church age so he began to address different churches the church in pagamos the church in smyrna the church in laodicea all of these church represent different physical there were real seven churches in asia minor but prophetically it seven is a number for perfection is that true and it represented the entire span of the church hallelujah are you following me now so john began to see how that there were certain things that happened that after there was the exit and we'll talk about that of the church certain vials were poured upon the earth is that true an angel will blow a trumpet and certain vials will be poured upon the earth one third of the vegetation will go one third of the water will be bitter can i tell you something those things are not prophetic statements they will happen one day in this earth hallelujah praise the lord so an unbalanced teaching of heaven on earth heaven will come to the earth but it's not going to be this kind of earth are you following me look at me i want to say something that is going to shock you now look at me how many of you have heard of the garden of eden now i want to shock you the garden of eden was only brought to the earth as an adumbration of what is going to happen in the book of revelations the garden of eden was not pure earth that's why it has not been found till now it was taken away when man came out the garden of eden is still intact let me prove it to you realize that there were two trees in the garden of eden one was called what the other was called what go to revelations and see the same tree of life there again nothing has happened to the tree the tree is still there at many of you just looking at me god sent man out of the garden of eden listen i will tell you that the garden of eden was not just earth material earth alone because look at the beings that guarded it when he sent them out the cherubim and a flaming sword hallelujah 
so heaven will come to the earth but this is after the church is raptured all right so that's number one great deception the unbalanced teaching of heaven on earth the for us now in the church age the concept of heaven on earth is to bring the reality listen to me please of the life the atmosphere the culture and the value system of heaven not to dethrone god and carry the entire throne and relocate it to the earth as many people are teaching now that is an unbalanced view number two this one is a very sensitive one the teaching against the concept of rapture we're going to talk about rapture a bit right now please look up the teaching against the concept of rapture that's the deception number two i call them great deceptions look up please how many of you have had a lot of nice teachings by great people saying there is nothing called a rapture that the rapture will never happen there will not be an exit of anybody out of the earth can i tell you the truth listen to me don't you let anybody deceive you now the men of god who are teaching these things are not fake they are genuinely honest but let me tell you the truth the best of a man is a man are you hearing what i'm saying this is why in ministry the word of god not prophetic experience must become the absolute basis of whatever it is that you teach people you teach people things from the word of god and then support it with whatever relevant experiences that are consistent with the word of god first thessalonians 4 let's answer this question once and for all is there an event that will happen in the world where there will be a massive exiting of people because a lot of people have preached it written books about it some of us have even believed it that there is nothing nothing about the rapture verse 13 this is paul speaking to the church in thessalonica first thessalonians 4 verse 13 are you there but i would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them that are asleep so this is talking about death now and the afterlife is that true he's trying to reveal to the church he said that ye sorrow not even as others who have no hope all right verse 14 for if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so them who are asleep god will bring with him start noticing the construction of this scripture next verse he said for this we say unto you by the word of the lord that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the lord stop that means there is an event called the coming of the lord is that true the coming of the lord i will explain it to you those outside if you are following say amen unto the coming of the lord all right shall not precede them who are asleep asleep means those who are dead physically verse 16 he said for the lord himself shall do what shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of god and the dead in christ shall do what they shall rise first that means there is a resurrection that will happen next verse he said then we who are alive and remain shall do what shall be caught up together with them where in the clouds to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the lord it says Where, wherefore comfort one another with these words look up please are you seeing that there is an event the bible says what will happen is that the heavens will open is that true god himself christ now will descend with a loud shout the shout of an archangel can i tell you something only those who are in christ will hear that shout the bible says the trumpet will be blown in zion he said blow the trumpet where in zion sound the alarm on my holy mountain there are people who will not hear that sound are you are you getting me now 
So the Bible says she will descend physically. All eyes will see him. But here it is, listen. In the first coming of Christ, his feet is not going to touch this earth. Are you getting me? The Bible says he will descend and in a fraction of a second, everyone who has ever died in Christ, whether it's in your bedroom before you built your house or wherever, the Bible says they will all come out at once with glorified supernatural bodies. They will be the ones to be honored first because they died in Christ. We who are alive instantly as they are being translated, this body will be changed. The Bible says, listen, it's, that's when we say, oh death, where is your sting? Because we will now look at our bodies. Ah, this is a material body. It was that body Jesus resurrected with. That's why he entered the, inside the room. He didn't need to knock. He just entered and said, all hail, all authority in heaven. He walked, he resurrected as the firstborn among us who are coming. Before he died, he was the only begotten son. But he's no longer the only begotten son. He's now the firstborn. That's why all those who died before Jesus were kept in the bosom of Abraham. They could not have resurrected. It will stop Jesus from being the firstborn. He was the tithe of God. Are you getting me now? The first fruit. After his ascension, the Bible says graves opened and other people now followed him. Are you understanding now? So there is an event called rapture. Whether CNN believes it or not is irrelevant. Whether Freemasons and the Illuminati and those who control the media mock and scorn at it, whether our brothers and sisters laugh at it, can I tell you, I see a lot of people mock God with audacity. The Bible says before the Son of Man comes, it will be as it were in the days of Noah. What happened in the days of Noah? He said build an ark. Judgment is coming. When Noah was building the ark and calling all the animals, some people were laughing at him. But the Bible says at a certain time, God closed the door and it began to rain 40 days. This is how it will be. As in the days of Noah. Some of you, every time you hear these messages, you laugh at it because you think it's just some story story that you did in Sunday school. Whether you believe it or not, there are some of our parents today, they have read books and read books and read God out of their life and they do not believe. They say it does not sound logical. Do you know something? Let me give you a little preview of what will happen when we check out of this place. The Bible says even death will run away from people. This death that everybody is running away from, some people will come to the mountains and say, fall on us. If a mountain is falling on you now, won't you run? But the Bible says, compared to the horror that will happen to the earth, people will beg the mountain to come and crush them. Are you getting me? It will happen. By that time, we are out of this place. We will be out of this place. Many of you are not living like missionaries. The Bible says Abraham sought for a city whose builder and maker is God. Let me tell you, if you do not live with eternity in view, you will live a useless life. I don't care how many houses you build. I don't care how many wives you marry and how many other concubines you have. I don't care how many books you read. If your eternity is not secured, you have all men most miserable let me announce it to the body of Christ now there is an event whether you call it the rapture or give it your own tribal name it doesn't matter but I'm saying there is an event a mass exodus of people out of this earth look at me can I tell you something when that event happens the earth is going to witness the greatest catastrophe. Think about a, a man driving people in a luxurious bus and he disappears. The danger is those in the bus will not die. 
Yeah. Those who are laughing, keep laughing. Can I tell you something? The Bible will become a bestseller instantly after the rapture. It will no longer be a subject of devotion. It will be the only trusted roadmap into what is next. Philosophers and historians will look for the Bible. My Bible will be there. I will drop it for whoever thinks we are joking. Because we will be with the word himself. The author. Hallelujah. Take this Christianity thing very seriously. When we were very, very small, those who got us saved, let me tell you, they did, they did not work miracles, but they had a depth of conviction as far as salvation and eternal reality is concerned. But right now, what we have in church is that people have pressed to the power dimension. We are working miracles. We have prosperity. Many pastors, many bishops, many people do not even know the prophetic destiny of the church after this life. All they know is where they will buy land for church again. Or where they will do this. Or where they will do that. But they do. What will happen? God will punish you as a man of God. If congregations keep coming to you and you are not honest enough to tell them about their eternal destiny. I have never, I have almost, maybe there are very few conferences where they talk about the reality of the eternal destiny. Look at the way people live on earth, amassing all kinds of things. When you think of eternity, you will see the folly of mankind. Jesus adumbrated it in the story of the rich fool. It was not money that made him a fool. It was his mindset that he did not have eternity in view. He gathered all he had and found security in it and said, My soul, ah, not my body. Prosperity does not touch the soul. He said, My soul, let this money secure you. And he said, You're a fool. I will prove to you that money is only relevant in this realm. Tonight, your soul will be demanded. There are many people who have sat down concentrating on money, on church growth, and different aspects of the faith. And they just died unprepared. And many of them today are in hellfire. Are you hearing me now? Nobody can plead. There are judges in hell. So who will plead for you? If you die without the Lord Jesus Christ, nobody will advocate for you you are going to hell take this seriously can i tell you something some of the people who are in hell had this kind of messages they didn't know it was going to be a serious issue they didn't know they were going to die very soon while it is true that we advocate for longevity not so that we will just sit down wasting our life on the lust of this life but we have a lot of things to do for the kingdom he said i shall not die but not live to raise money live to declare that means if you are not declaring you are not permitted to live are you getting me please koinonia take serious what i'm saying because there are people in hell today as i speak to you from hell they are hearing this message and wondering look at the rich man jesus has given us a window look at the rich man while he was in the, in hell he saw his brothers still behaving foolish like him and he begged abraham he said abraham please i love my family so much can you please send lazarus to come from the dead and maybe when they see him from the dead they will believe him and Jesus made a statement that is still relevant today. He said, whether he comes from the dead, let me tell you, they won't believe him. Because there is something called the deceitfulness of riches. The deceitfulness of this life. I see the way many people sit down. Somebody can even look at you and say, I will eliminate you. Look at a foolish person. You were born by a woman. A seed fertilized your mother to give birth to you. Now you have such an audacity to believe the life of another man is in your hands. Because of political power 
because of whatever can i tell you something every soul in this earth is subject to the voice of god and when he makes demand of you he will not give you room to package everything you will leave at once are you listening to me this is a very very important message tonight there is an event called the rapture a day will come i don't know if i will see you but i guarantee you if you make it you will see me because i'm taking my life seriously the bible says paul speaking said let it not be that after i have preached i myself all this apostle thing you do only ends in this realm oh. no demon has called one person apostle are you getting what i'm saying you will not carry your parish to hell or to heaven you will not carry your money whatever you have you won't carry your certificate there's no need never allow westernization and education and social orientation to preach you out of this truth our fathers died the missionaries that came to this country died with this one single message they did not tap into the area of divine health and malaria killed them but at least they died in christ they are resting at the bosom of god today but there are many erroneous teachings many ministers camping around some devilish teachings teaching people that this life they will remain forever here at this state and that there is no rapture oh there is my bible tells me there is i just read it for you jesus is returning are you listening to me his feet will not touch the earth those who have been dead in christ they will arise and we who are alive we will meet with them listen please when we meet with them what will happen we will be caught up in the air and we will return watch this the moment that happens then there will now be an unleashing of the man of sin the one who we now call the antichrist hello planet earth there is the antichrist he's not just a system he's also an entity are you getting what i'm saying do you know why the antichrist ministry will be celebrated because the chaos that will happen to the earth after the rapture it will confuse journalists it will confuse everyone and then he will come in and attempt to stabilize the world right now there is a move the whole move of the world is to bring the entire earth right now into a one wall system and this is the rebuilding of the tower of babel these are already the structures of the antichrist look at facebook something if i slap jakes right now in 10 minutes all over the world the information can go viral welcome these are the machineries that the antichrist will make use of they are not demonic machineries we will use them for the kingdom and check out and leave it for whoever cares about them i don't know what we will do with the oil of nigeria that we are fighting on when we all depart i don't know if you will sit down inside the oil mine and drink the oil by yourself there are some of you is 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 your your quest for marriage that will take you to hell you don't want to hear anything about god if the teaching is not on how to force your husband to come into your life you are not ready i cannot wait here is my life here is my life i want to give i want to give in serving my fellow man doing the will of god here is my life here is my life here is my life i rather you call me a failure from earth's perspective i rather have a ministry 
where these are all my members and I'm sure every one of them is going to heaven than to have a crowd of people there are many congregations in Nigeria that are on the highway to hell altar call there are churches that the last time an altar call was made was more than one year if they make altar call is for sowing many people receive miracles they come and testify i was healed but they are going to hell i was blessed but i was going to hell they prophesied to me and i got the miracle job the miracle baby came you and the baby well babies are not in hell i'll talk about that there are no babies in hell there are small children but no babies in hell i will tell you that when we talk about the assurance of salvation I want to ask you a question right now is your name in the book of life please look up I'm asking you a very serious question I'm not asking your neighbor is your name in the book of life I've had another teaching there's no book of life what is all this this Bible is clear God gave people wisdom to interpret it in English to help us what is it about the book of life that you don't understand the bible says books were open i read it last week he said and then another book was open and it was called the book of life he said whoever's name whether you are a preacher with rema if your name is not found in the book of life the bible says you will be cast into the lake of fire please take it seriously that you bear the title apostle and prophet does not take your name to the book of life are you hearing what i'm saying that you can quote genesis to revelation does not put your name in the book of life please take what i'm saying seriously the rapture will happen it will happen even evangelists now hear the nonsense they teach on crusade grounds they gather people and instead of lashing this thing and am I need to enter very well so that those I don't mean condemnation I mean conviction in the days of DL Moody let me tell you something when they preached the power of conviction that left people were caught up and they saw visions of hell at once and they returned they held their seats and they were shivering waiting for the time of altar call but right now, when we make altar calls, the people are even angry. The pastor keeps begging because he's embarrassed. He's just saying, somebody come. The spirit of God is still telling me there's somebody. And you are looking at the person. They're saying, all right, if you feel you just want a better life, you just things are not working, then somebody drowsily comes out as if you are doing the pastor a favor. This night, if I make altar call, those of you who are outside, just see it as a relay race. As soon as I make the altar call, leave your friend and run and just come and stand here. Because this is about your life. I don't ask people to close their eyes when I'm making altar calls. I'm not saying if, if you think you can make it. I think I have not found a scriptural reason to back it. There is no reason to ask somebody to close. It's like I say, close your eyes, I want to drink water. Or close your eyes, I, I want to open my Bible. Why should I close your eyes? Because you are coming. So I will not know you are going to heaven. If you don't go, I will not see you there. Once I don't see you there, I already know that you didn't make it. There are many Bible study teachers who are going to hell. There are many follow-up committee chairmen who are on their way to hell. They just gave them church appointment. They will finish drinking beer and do everything and say, all right, come. Uh, according to the manual of this church, right now, now that you are in Christ, desire the pure milk of the word, blah, 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 blah. And while you are talking, this person has never given his life to Christ. It's just that he has stayed so long and he has caused so much trouble in the church. During the board meeting, they said, just give him. Give him, let's rest. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. This night, just forget about your titles. 
forget about your ministry forget about the fact that you are married forget about the fact that you are working right now just let everything that is earthbound depart from you for a few minutes and see how empty your life is without jesus christ i can do nothing without you there's no life to me so i need you in my life today this is one of the biggest deception in the body of christ right now there are even people that they pronounce salvation on because of the good deeds they have done to church look at me i will tell you where this error came from remember jesus said whosoever sins you forgive is forgiven remember he said that to his disciples now a lot of men of god or people believe they have the exclusive right to come and tell you i set you free whether you feel the remorse of sin or not whether you are ready to get born again or not pastor i was strolling by a car showroom and i thought that this is your suffering let me alleviate it and i bought you a home and you say you will make heaven no it's not a prophecy there is a condition i cannot prophesy the making of heaven to you are you getting what i'm saying many devilish teachings in the body of christ you release people to go to heaven or release them to go to hell by a prophetic pronunciation with no activity on their part you see this is why our altar calls don't last the people do not see a need to come out hallelujah before the people come out we put handkerchiefs here then we put tea or we put something and say just come out and there are counselors waiting with handkerchiefs to embrace you these people are pressured through life they are not making a sincere decision for jesus christ while they make it to just say okay take the tea and there is a, a little rehab room in the church where you sit down and explain to us all your sorrows i'm not saying don't care for people they say my husband left me he didn't leave any money for the children and they say oh lord strengthen them help them through life may you grant grace and may we all meet in heaven let me tell you that is a recitation it doesn't make any no bearing it does not mean anything some of you have convinced yourself that you are born again after this night you will know that you are not born again you see the reason why jesus said not all of you should presume to be teachers because your judgment will be heavier if you deceive the people that they are saved when they are not saved their yoke will be upon your head see let me tell you listen i'm a young man you think i like shouting like this you think I, I i would have come to teach you about prosperity or dimensions of the anointing and have everybody rejoice some of you are angry because i'm saying this thing now but the problem is you cannot take me to heaven so why should i let your face stop me from preaching the truth god gave me an anointing i opened my big mouth and i said god use me God said, yeah, you mean it? He said, yes, use me. Now he has given me the anointing. If I sit down and say, I don't want to offend Aaron. So let's just say, there are many ways to God, really. The, 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 it just depends on how fast you get there. Jesus said, I am the way. Everybody said the way. Men of God are now teaching that there are many ways, really. <laughs> Heaven is not the road to Abuja. You can follow directly through Zaria. Kaduna, you can follow through Kachia. There are many ways to get there. But when it comes to your eternal salvation, can I tell you something? Whether you are in Hawaii or Dubai or Kuwait or Zaria, the principle of salvation is the same. If Jesus is not in your heart, I guarantee you, you are going to hellfire. Number three. Let's hurry up. 
the third great deception that has come upon the body of Christ now this is where I want to center on for a while is perverted encounters of quote heaven and hell you get my point put a small what do they call it now just put it there perverted encounters perverted encounters of heaven and hell Matthew 24 24 while you open it just pray in tongues I'm about to say something that I believe is going to liberate the body of Christ right now Are you there? Matthew 24. Verse 23. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. 24. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets and shall show great signs take note and wonders in so much that if it were possible they shall deceive even the very elect 25 behold i have told you before verse 26 wherefore if they shall say unto you behold he is in the desert go not forth behold he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not. Look up, please. Now, in the early 70s, because of the renaissance that began to happen to the body of Christ, there were several revivals that started breaking out around Europe and then America. Certain people, because of their passion and their quest for God, Listen to me. They were granted certain spiritual encounters. Now, this had happened at various levels in the church age. We see that Paul had an encounter. Is that true? There, there, there is a record in scripture. I think, let me start by saying this. It is not unscriptural to have a spiritual visionary experience. The Bible says in the latter days, Joel 2, I shall pour my spirit upon all flesh. He said, and what? Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men will see visions, not a sister, visions. Very serious spiritual activities that are about to be unfolded. And then Jesus said, when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth and he will show you that means you will see are you following me jeremiah 33 verse 3 says call on to me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things all through scripture abraham had supernatural encounters moses are you following me now had a supernatural encounter Daniel, you list all of them. They had dramatic supernatural encounters. Isaiah, Ezekiel, all of these people. So it's okay to have spiritual encounters. Zechariah, a high priest that was ministering that year, had the angel appear to him. So the encounters of Jesus, hell and heaven is not against the scope of scripture. Are you getting me now? And so several people were granted access. And I'll tell you why God did this. Listen. The Bible says in Ezekiel 18. There's no time. It says, 
the wages of sin. He said, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Is that true? And that the wages of sin is death. And then the Bible says that, paraphrasing now the prophet speaking, he said, is it God's desire that a sinner should perish and that he will not return and be delivered? So, God's desperation for the salvation of mankind, God saw the degree of perversion and he saw that whatever needs to be done to help man understand the reality of his eternal destiny, are you listening to me? And then out of that compassion, God began to call certain people into these experiences. He appeared to them. He showed them heaven. He showed them hell. They saw their loved ones so that they would come back with powerful messages. Now listen. When this started, those who were caught up were not even asking Jesus that they wanted to go to heaven. Are you getting me now? back in the 70s he appeared to them and he categorically told them the reason why he appeared to them and he took some of these people to heaven they saw the glories of heaven they saw the angelic they saw a lot of things and then he took them to hell some of them saw their loved ones they saw the different chambers of hell and the they had the opportunity to talk with certain people. Is that true? They came back to this physical realm and you could see the effect on their physical bodies. For some of them, when they came back, they stopped whatever they were doing. It took them years to recover because of the, the reality of the imprint of what happened to them. Praise the Lord. And you can see that their encounter yielded fruits. Because they were going around evangelizing and teaching people. And everything that they taught was not just based on the experience. It was based on the word supported by those experiences. Listen. When this strategy started becoming effective. From the 80s down to the late 90s. Satan started perverting it with what I call false spiritual experiences. What did I say? False spiritual experiences. Certain people started having beings that were superhumans. Are you listening to me? Appear to them and then started bringing messages for them. Started taking them to astral realms. Taking them to certain planes that were not pure heaven. But because the realm of the spirit is a vast realm. Are you getting me now? Some of these people had encounters and they came back with so-called experiences from Jesus, from hell, from planes. And you can see that the messages that they brought only ended up bringing fear and condemnation, not conviction to the body of Christ. Are you getting me? To a point that even those who were born again were now doubting the validity of their salvation. They started coming with ridiculous conditions that no human being can fulfill to meet heaven. Are you getting what I'm saying? The devil started mixing these things. And I will show you that this is consistent with Satan's character. The Bible says that Jesus planted wheat. And then in the night, what happened? Satan quietly came and planted tears. Are you seeing that is scriptural? And when the vine dressers came and saw it, they said, Master, let's block it. And he said, No, 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 no. Leave it. Because in, in the bid to correct it, you may injure the experiences that are true. Let them grow. Let the experience mature. Then you can now start filtering it. Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel, when you come 
I happened to stumble across a number of these great articles. One of it disturbed me. It was somebody who was not a believer. And he seemingly died and went to hell. And when he got to hell, the escort that took him to hell, listen to me, started listing almost all the men of God that have labored for the kingdom and died. I, I don't want to begin to mention names, but let your mind grow wild. The, anybody you know that church history has spoken, he said they saw them in hell and that in hell, they began to tell him the names of other preachers who were here in heaven. I mean, in the earth realm, who are also going to hell. And the person brought the article with a loud cry. And they began to write books and publish it around. Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to tell you a few things that some people have come back with that they said made people to go to hell. I'll just list them at random. Hallelujah. A lot of people have come back from hell and heaven and said when they went to heaven, Jesus told them, all the ladies wearing trousers are going to hell. All the people who are not covering their hair are going to hell. All the brothers with plenty hair going to hell. All those on jeans going to hell. Anybody that wears a watch that is expensive like this, you are going to hell. Those who do not bring offering in church, going to hell. If you look at a sister and just say, ah, this lady is beautiful. Please don't laugh. I'm not mocking those people. I'm trying to communicate something serious here. Are you following me now? If you have a beautiful church with a nice pulpit and you are organized, it's a sign that God is not with you. If you're a man of God and you have a crowd, there is every probability you are going to hell. If you are rich and you are a millionaire, you are going to hell. So they came with, if you are wearing bangles, if you wear any nice earring, you are going to hell. If you use cream or a nice perfume, this is a sign you are not serious with the agenda of God. You are going to hell. So, different, listen please. Don't, I know that we come from different churches. I'm not trying to talk about church at all. Please, get my motive for communicating this. And then, other people said they went to heaven and saw certain people that were not close to anything God. They said they saw them in heaven. They were gloriously seated adorned with white robes and now they began to confuse people in the earth realm hallelujah other people also said that they went to hell and they went to rescue others that were in hell and brought them back to life I, I'm, i've read some of these things so these are not hearsays to the extent that they went to begin to mention the names of men of God. I've not seen my name in any of the books, but who knows? Who knows? Very soon, somebody now will go and say he saw that they have already written it. Just finish what you are doing and come back. Now, now listen. Let me tell you what this will do to a new convert. Let me tell you what it will do to a new convert. If you are looking up to a man of God for spiritual direction, are you getting me? His spiritual life is serving as an encouragement to push you. And they now say that man of God, they have already signed the document that is going to hell. Can I tell you something? I want to prove to you scripturally. It is impossible to conclude about a man in the earth when he is still alive. So that makes that thing a fallacy. Because the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die. After this judgment, judgment is not before death. Hallelujah. A lot of people read the Bible as story books. Now go to bookstores and see every kind of divine revelation book. By any and everybody. Listen. Spiritual encounters do not renew your mind. 
your mind is renewed by the word of God visions can be corrupted according to the residue of Babylon that is left in your mind I can prophesy out of an unrenewed mind and miss the spirit because my mind has not come into alignment why will Paul cry and tell the church my little two children of whom I travail until Christ be formed he was talking to believers listen let me tell you something hear me if I am looking for money right now huh, and God opens my eyes I can pervert the gift of the spirit and look at promises account and call your account number and call the name of your father mother and brother and tell you go and withdraw this exact amount is that the amount you are? say it and people will clap that does not mean God said it are you getting me now it, the gift may be correct it came from God but because I have not stayed with the spirit to sustain the character that will back that level of spiritual delivery I can pervert it and corrupt it this is how many men of God have entered witchcraft unknowingly because they do not know the word their entire life is supported by spiritual experiences so the day God appears and the day a witch appears they don't know the difference they download the same message and keep contradicting themselves hallelujah perverted encounters many people I know a lady who went to seeming heaven I read her article I think she was an Indian Indian or one of these ladies and she said she saw the Holy Spirit as a woman in fact Ruach was the name now she gave it a Hebrew name and said the Holy Spirit is a woman she brought there is the book there is the book she wrote it the way of the master these guys that do program the way of the wasa they were interviewing one gay man that has become a woman the person said God told him that what he was doing is right do you know that there is a gay Bible right now oh yes there is a gay Bible to have seen it online people came with revelations you see what this this distorted revelation the Bible says even if an angel comes with another gospel he said let him be accursed hallelujah see hear me the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me are you hearing me I have seen him I have not gone to heaven I have not gone to hell but I've been caught up infinite times to the realm of the spirit. And I can tell you the realm of the spirit has a lot of spiritual planes. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's an atmosphere. Many people, the realms they are going to are astral realms. Everybody say astral realms. They, they, they travel. You hear them say they went to Jupiter. They went to Mars. They went to Pluto. They came with revelation from Pluto. They, they met a deity in Pluto. And, 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 and he told them, we are coming to the earth. And they come back and start teaching according to that which they have learned. Many things are transporting themselves from many foreign demonic realms. And they are finding their way to the body of Christ. Because many people are trying to do the things that they saw. Everybody lift up your Bible. In this jungle of confusion, this is the only correct roadmap to arrive there. Lift your Bible. If you don't have a Bible, lift what you have. So long as it contains the word of God there. Say, this is my Bible. It's the truth of God's word. It will never change. It will never be edited. It is truth for eternity. In the name of Jesus. Don't sit down with your Bible. Some of us, the last time we read our Bible was over a month ago. All we keep reading, I believe in reading men of God's books. Don't get me wrong. But where books replace the book? It 
in our quest for Rema, can I tell you something? I am frankly not impressed when I hear people bring Rema. All I want to know is the degree of its agreeableness with truth because the devil can give Rema. The Bible says the demons know that Jesus is Lord. That means they can give you lecture. By God's grace, I have conducted countless deliverances for people and sometimes these demon spirits begin to shout and manifest and you hear them quoting scriptures more accurate Kenny is not around I was praying for a lady hear me I was praying for a lady who came over at my place and as soon as I laid my hands on that lady this lady began to manifest and she was shouting, shouting, just making noise. These demons, different voices, different kinds of demons were talking. This lady was quoting scriptures, quoting scriptures, and the demon would not go. Later on, the spirit started shouting, and he said, Apostle, is it not you that taught in Koinonia that we should redeem the time? Why are you wasting your time on me? Why don't you concentrate on God's people? This is a demon spirit. Now, I will carry that revelation. Are you seeing now? I will say I had from the realm of the spirit that I should not waste my time. You, you get the point now? This is many people use information from deliverances. Is that true? Informations that are supplied. Now listen, here is the balance. The sincere truth is under God's light, everything tells the truth, including Satan. Are you getting me? under the light of god because the bible says at the mention of his name every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess the truth no one tongue will lie but then the balance is where you stay and begin to receive supply please i'm not criticizing any man of god are you getting my point i'm just communicating to you the truth of god's word if your pastor or you conducts deliverance like that we are learning I believe we are growing as we grow we'll find out more but as far as the word of god shows us at this level i tell you the truth there are not many times that jesus held conversations with demons and where he did that it was to reveal to us certain things like i said if that is a method that has worked for you jesus said whoever is not against us hallelujah whoever is not against us is for us perverted encounters a lot of people have come back with dramatic encounters under certain demonic anointings men of god go for conferences some of them come from covens demonic covens and they seemingly open the heavens over congregations and translate people through magic and astral travels into realms in the spirit and there is a widespread manifestation a man called pastor kim listen to me true story a man called pastor kim i think in one of the asian countries they were having a vigil for 30 days how many days 30 days every night and they were having a lot of genuine spiritual encounters but every time the people had the encounters they went to the pastor the pastor was a pastor indeed not this kind of our pastor they 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 earned the right to be called spiritual leaders based on their commitment and their sacrifices and hear me this is what happened and it shocked me one of the innocent ladies said as they were praying because they had appearances, visible appearances that like an angel will appear right now and up to 10, 20 people will see the person. It is possible. While they prayed and fasted, the Holy Ghost spoke to them, not to one person, to them. They had him, all of them, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. So the Holy Ghost can speak expressly to people from scripture. Hallelujah. Then what happened? This lady, listen. In the heat of the prayer, they were having experiences. The next thing, a seeming Jesus, listen please, a seeming Jesus appeared to the lady and came and said, I am the Lord Jesus. Are you getting me? 
And when she looked, because the pastor had trained them to discern spirits. Are you seeing a good pastor? Not that he will discern for them and take the glory as a geo. He has trained the members to discern spirits. He has drilled the church to be strong and manifest as the church indeed. So while the lady was looking at Jesus, although she was seeing a picture of a seeming Jesus, she said in her spirit, that light, there was no connection. Are you getting me? Deep was not calling on to deep. And the Jesus was telling her, come. I am Jesus, come. And she looked. Immediately, she was comparing his experience with many that have happened in scripture. Because every time he's called the Prince of Peace. So if he appears, there should be the atmosphere that characterizes his presence. But there was turbulence in her spirit. Hallelujah. Immediately she looked at him. And then she said she just looked at him. And she called her pastor. And they looked at him. And the pastor laughed. And she just said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. That seeming Jesus changed immediately into a big, ugly beast and disappeared. That would have been another movement founded now. Is that true? He would have called and said, now, the things that I speak unto you, write. I want to show you another dimension of power. Every time you want my power to move, Tell the people to cut wheel four times and touch Pastor William's right hand and all kinds of devilish movements arise from seeming encounters. Hear me, church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me, Koinonia. Let me tell you, do not reject supernatural experiences because God is still in the business of doing it. But the Holy Spirit in this day and time must become your best friend. Are you getting me? It is the spirit together with the bride that will tell the world to come. If you never have any spiritual experience in your life, it does not make you less spiritual. Are you getting me? A lot of pastors have taught. Now they rank people in church according to those who see visions. And everybody come with every kind of junk. You go and see time for prayer meetings. And you see everybody. Praise the Lord. I saw something. What did you see, my brother? Tell us. I saw something. I saw my man. I was in a place. And when I was standing there, I saw my man. And then Pastor Jake, you will never see anything wrong against him because you. And then Pastor Jake spoke to him and said, my man, come, I will do this. And you waste people's time telling them lies. A lot of people lie on it. They didn't go anywhere. They didn't see those they said they saw. They said, and the angel told me to do. Let me tell you, hear me. See, if an angel appears right now, the moment I see him, none of you here will be able to stand again. You may not see him, but you will feel his effect. This is how spiritual things work. Let me prove it to you. When Jesus appeared to Saul, they did not see him, but all of them fell at once. The moment spiritual things materializes to one person, there will be an effect. That's why notice when I'm ministering to people and I hold their hands, the moment... That I see the demon in the spirit and I say, I see you. You see the person start manifesting. There must be a reaction in this realm. These are spiritual laws. See, ask yourself this night whether you are ready for ministry, my brother. This hurry, some of you are hurrying with all what I'm sharing now. Ask yourself whether you are ready for ministry. Because some of you right now are just waiting for strike to finish. Let you just graduate and go and confuse people. Some of you have gone to one Bible college, one school of ministry here, which is nice. And you just believe that by it, you are qualified. It takes a spirit to qualify a man. The Bible says he has made us able ministers. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. You must eat this Bible. If you want to represent Christ. Are you hearing me? Stay with the word. Respect men of God. Honor them. But value the Bible more than any man. Including myself. When I become more important to you than the word of God. I have become an idol. 
Are you hearing me? As powerful as koinonia message is, let it keep blessing you. But I love God because most of the testimonies that come here are on account of the word. Not necessarily just prophecies or, or that okay, this and that happened. The reason why the messages go is because of the word of God that, that is contained in it. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive grace and discernment to detect wrong experiences. Now very quickly, right. I want to show you how do you test spirits? How do you test experiences? We're going to round up now and we'll pray. I thought we'll be able to finish because I need to teach on assurance of salvation. If we cannot touch that, no problem. We'll touch on it briefly before we enter a new topic next week. If somebody comes right now and says, Joshua Selman, I think you are going to hell. I'm not even going to pray about it. I'll just tell the person, I appreciate your opinion. You can know. Some of you don't know. That's why right now, after this hot message, you have come out from many altar calls, so you even came out last week. If I call now, you will still come out. Which may be necessary, if it's necessary, come out. But the truth is, many people come out of altar calls because of uncertainty. When the message is too hot, you tell yourself prevention is better than cure. <laughs> At least God will not drive me. Let me just come out. So that if I've done it wrongly somewhere, let me do it correctly now. Have you been blessed this night? This should not make you go and start mocking people and say, you, what nonsense is your own pastor teaching like this? No. You don't become matured like that. It's not for you to carry the word and say, now nah, for you, if this is what you are getting here, I'm sorry for you. Mm -mm. The, the word of God makes you become like Christ. It should project in you the spirit of love and appreciation for the body of Christ. Our ultimate goal is to give you a kingdom mindset, not a koinonia mindset. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true. Lamb of God, I worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are faithful and true. Lamb of God, I worship you. Hallelujah. How do you test spirits? Number one. Every activity in the kingdom must be consistent with the written word of God. Whether preaching, whether teaching, whether prophesying, every activity in the kingdom must be consistent with the written word of God. That means if I come to prophesy to you or I teach you and it's not consistent with the universal character of truth, reject it. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. Is that true? It said whether there be tongues, they will pass away. Whether there be prophecies, they will pass away. But the word of the Lord abides forever. So whatever is being done, if I come to prophesy to you right now, whether it's a good prophecy or a bad prophecy number one you must judge the character of the man delivering it are you following me now if i am angry with pastor femi and god gives me a word for him do you know that most likely my prophetic word will be perverted because it's not flowing from the spirit of love so even where god has stopped the prophecy another spirit will take over and I will say something else that God did not say. That's why you must minister in love. 
Number two, the Bible says, this is how you know the spirit that is of God and the spirit of error. He said, every spirit that does not say Jesus is Lord, every spirit. What scripture is that? First John. I think First John. Let's find it. It's important. We'll find it and then we'll pray. Kapro As you open it, begin to pray in tongues. Who has found it? Four verse, verse one. Thank you, good Bible students. Four verse one, first John. Some of you have no hope of opening anything. You have never ever opened it. You don't even know that it's there. Take your Bible study serious. I, I saw some of you. It was everybody open now. Some of you say, ah, let me quietly close my Bible. I don't even know where first John is. Change. Change. We don't condemn you. First John chapter 4 verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test the spirit whether they are of God because many what? False prophets are gone into the world. What's the litmus test? Verse 2. By this know ye the spirit of God. He said every spirit that confesses that Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Verse 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist of which ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is in the world. Listen. When you are about to test spirits, whatever spirit that does not acknowledge the ministry that Jesus came to do. He said, every spirit that does not confess that Christ is come in the flesh. Why did he come in the flesh? Great is the mystery of godliness. That Christ, God, became flesh. Is that true? He died for people to redeem them. That means any prophetic word that will not ultimately lead to your redemption and to your salvation is a fallacy and is of the devil. There are few judgments in scripture that are called the written judgment. They are written because nobody will pray them away. For instance, nobody will pray sinners out of hellfire. It's a written judgment. Is that true? Nobody will pray the tribulation away. The tribulation is coming. It's a written judgment. Nobody will pray away the doom of Satan. We can't come together and say Satan has caused too much problem in the world. Let's pray. Let God have mercy on him and so that we will rest. No. It's a written judgment. Psalms 149 talks about the written judgment. But as long as a human being, listen, listen please. If I am a man of God today and I walk to Mike and I say, Mike, your case, there's no hope again. Are you getting me? You, you are going to hell. There is no case. This is a perversion. It's not the spirit of God because there is hope for the living. He who is just, so long as you are alive. Are you getting me? The condition, listen please. There is still a condition for you to be alive. And it will be a hopeless condition. Let me tell you that. It is called when you have a reprobate mind. The Bible says a time came when God himself was weary. And it repented God that he made men. Is that true? The Bible begins to talk of certain people. Who whose conscience has been seared with hot iron. There are people today that even if Jesus Christ walks in Zaria for 100 days physically, they will look at him and say, Jesus, yeah, where from again? I thought you came here yesterday, but they will not repent. Because Jesus walked for 33 years. They saw him. Some even escorted him and watched at the cross. They still died and went to hell. 
there were two sinners by his left and his right. Is that true? One of the sinners went to hell. One of the sinners went with him in paradise. You are the spirit of God. I feel your touch in my life. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'll give you three points. What did I say? The first point is testing spirits. It must be consistent with the universal character of the word of God. Listen, because of our personality differences as preachers and the vessels of delivering the word of God, you can see a man of God who is very quiet. There are some of you that a man of God is quiet does not make him genuine. It's just his personality. There are other people like me who can be talkative. Bah, 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 bah. I say, Kai, this guy is talking too much. Like, like this is not of God. If it's of God, he will be quiet. No. You don't judge spiritual things by people's personality. Elijah was a temperous person. Are you getting me? He called down fire at once. He didn't even waste time. There were other emotional prophets like Jeremiah who were always crying. Is that true? They were called weeping prophets. It was him that wrote lamentations. He was lamenting, lamenting. There were certain disciples that were as hard as a rock. Nothing moved them. But there were others who were soft. One of them was John the Beloved. There were some who were just less as fair. All these other names in the Bible that the Bible doesn't record. They were dear, but they were not dear. They were just... Let's go a fishing. I'm going. Come follow me. They still came. You know, just there are some Christians like that. So personalities differ. <laughs> There's a man of God. Every time I watch on TV, I almost laugh. That guy can speak almost 120 words per minute. I've never. The day he was talking with his wife, I didn't know it was introduction. Is that also? I said, You have introduced your wife. But he's a very sound man of God. Very sound man of God. There are others who will take one hour. You need to fight sleep and open your eyes like this. Open your eyes. Before you understand. But regardless of how it is. Discern what they are saying in light of truth. Are you getting me? Number two. No, I'm, 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 we're reviewing. What's the second point? Yes. That does not say Christ has come in the flesh. In other words, every truth of God's word must point men towards redemption. Any kind of redemption. Whether redemption from their predicament, redemption from ignorance, redemption from eternal loss. God is a redemptive person. Are you following me now? So if I just tell you, I say, Tolu, I see disaster coming to your house. Or I see that somebody in your house wants to kill somebody. That's an incomplete prophecy. Because there is no redemptive aspect of that prophecy. Are you getting me? So I have a right to dump that prophecy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The third one. And I'll round up with this. Now do an altar call and we'll pray. Hallelujah. Are you ready now? It must bring three things. Three things in the lives of people there. That's the third point. Number one, it must reveal the love of God. It must not bring condemnation and it must bring hope. Love, lack of condemnation and hope. See, listen. God does not condemn, but he also does not condone. Are you getting me now? Condemnation is different from conviction. What the Holy Ghost does is conviction. What men do is condemnation. God will not condemn you, but it does not mean he will allow you. If I speak to you right now, and you sense that what I'm saying is coming from the heart of love, 
If God shows me, for instance, that this brother has been sleeping around and I just come and look at him and I just wind my hand. I say, I've been wasting my time in Koinonia here talking. I just give him a dirty slap. I say, come here, come and kneel down here. You know, churches have become paramilitary right now. We humiliate God's people because they sign our membership register. And I give him a dirty slap. I say, so, whose wife have you been sleeping with? Come and stand here. Whose wife have you been sleeping with? This is not the manifestation of the spirit of Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? If God has revealed to me, assuming for instance, this is your wife and you have been sleeping around, I will apply the wisdom of God's word because the kingdom of God is not in word but in righteousness, peace. That means I will not wreck your family in an attempt to reveal something to you. Are you getting me? I rather call, that's why sometimes you see me talk to away. I take the mic away because of the sensitive things I'm telling them. I heard of a story of one zealous man of God whose wife, she, a preacher's wife has been sleeping around in a church. He's a prophet, a true prophet. But this guy that you mismanage the anointing does not mean you are not genuine. It's just that you are not matured and it can lead to perversion. Which is not the character of the spirit. True story it happened in Abuja. The man just looked at the pastor's wife and started pissing everything that was happening in the church. Called her out. Called some of the brothers, the deacons, the helpers in the church who are helping the pastor and all the people. You see, it caused more chaos in the church than redemption. There are many men of God that do this. This is not the spirit of Christ. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, that does not mean to condone. Are you getting me? But the Bible says, do not rebuke an elder publicly. There are scriptural guidelines. I would rather call them and say, okay, I want to see you with your wife. Or mama, I want to see you. This is what the Lord is showing me. And I think it's good that you work on this, this and that and that area. Some of you have had the F on three. To send text messages to men of God. Hello sir. The Lord is showing me you are not being serious with your life. You are just pretending. Your days are numbered. I speak as a child of God. Send. You are not matured. You think it's spiritual maturity. Or you hear a hot message like this. You just go and say daddy. Time has come to stop sleeping with all these women. I will not keep quiet again. If you like, kill me. Send. Your father will beat you and drive you out of the house. Spiritual things must be approached with wisdom. That's why Jesus met with the centurion. Because he was a noble man. And they talked one on one. Nobody had that case again. There are people today I counsel because they are men of God and the status they have. Sometimes they come, they have fallen or done something. You will never hear it from my mouth anywhere. It must bring love. There are many people that cannot go and meet a man of God for counseling because of what they have done. Many people rather go and meet other pastors than meet their men of God because they know if I tell the pastor I did this, the pastor, now this, it can be annoying. Let me tell you the truth. You don't know what it means to stand here every week and be lashing it out. Some of you just keep looking like this. As you are looking, your mind is already thinking of the bad things you go and do. So it can be frustrating. However, it is at that point we will see how much of the spirit of Christ. If you are so full of the Holy Spirit that you are prophesying and it's not leading to love and discipline, something is wrong. The same Holy Spirit who operates in you so strongly should manifest his character too so strongly in you. Is that true? These three litmus tests. Test every word. As you go browsing, when you see revelations, test them. If you don't believe them, don't condemn the man of God. Don't go and write any article against any man of God and quote me. Praise God. Perversion. This one is on rampage. And it must stop. We are going to pray this night. Many of our family members started misbehaving the day one prophet came to their house and told them something about seeming heaven and hell. They just confused. I know I counseled a, a family like that. Something happened around the family and they brought some devilish teachings 
to the point that it started affecting their mother. Rise up on your feet. Everybody inside and outside, please stand on your feet. Please, all of you, just close your eyes in one minute. Inside and outside, just close your eyes in one minute. I want to talk to you now. Heaven is real. Hell is real. And Jesus is coming soon. One day, the trumpet will sound. And I tell you the truth from my heart. There are many people who have not made it right with God. Some of you are inside this auditorium right now. Some of you are outside. Some of you may be men of God. Next week I will touch on the conditions for salvation. And the assurance of salvation. And will answer the question, can a man lose his salvation? Hallelujah. But right now, you have heard the word of the Lord. As you're standing outside or inside, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and saying it's time to make your ways right. Some of you have never made this decision. Every time you hear preachers preach it, you keep laughing. Let me tell you something. Heaven is real. Jesus is coming soon. A day will come, this life will pack up. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord. But you found yourself backsliding. You really derailed from the things of God. Now is the time to make up your mind. I know there are many of you outside. Some of you were invited. You just strolled with your friends. The Lord wants to give you a new beginning. Any other thing we teach that is relevant in time is only relevant if your eternal salvation is guaranteed. As you are standing, hearing my voice in Koinonia this night, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. No matter how many times you have come out, even if you came out last week and you think what you did was just play, I want you to make a decision for Jesus Christ. As the worship team begins to sing all oh, the blood of Jesus, I want you to leave wherever you are and run and come and kneel down here. I'm going to count one to ten. Hallelujah. As I count one to ten, do not let the devil stop you. The devil wants you to go to hell. As I begin to count, I want you to rush out right now. One. Two. Run out. There are many of you. You are welcome. Run and come and kneel down. Run and come and kneel down. Leave your seat and run. Three. No power will stop you. Keep coming. Don't let your friends stop you. There is heaven and there is hell. Four. Keep coming. No matter how far you are, keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is your redemption from hell. Five. Six. Keep coming. There are still more people outside. There are still more people outside. Don't let the devil rob you of this opportunity. Seven. The Lord is ministering to me. There are still more people outside. Some of you are afraid of your friends. The friends that you came with, they will go to heaven and leave you behind. I want you to leave your seat right now and come. Leave your seat and come. There are a number of you outside. The Lord is ministering to me. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Begin to come right now. Eight. Leave your seat and begin to come. 
begin to come. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Eight. Shake up a balala. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't let no devil stop you. Keep coming. For the salvation of your soul. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. I salute all of you that took the bold step to come out. And should in case you are in the crowd and the Holy Ghost is speaking to you right now, you can still run and come and join them. There's no need to be afraid. Nobody condemns you. This is a family. We are genuinely interested in your salvation. Those of you who are here, lift your hands and begin to talk to the Lord with your own words. God brought you out here. Lift your hands. Take it seriously. Begin to talk to the Lord. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Those in the congregation, stretch your hands and pray for them. Stretch your hands and pray for them. A harvest for the kingdom. Because you invited them, they will not go to hell. Look at them crying. Look at people crying genuinely. I believe, I believe, Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe, I believe, I believe, Lord. Time. I, I believe. believe. I believe. The Bible says, Whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Lift your hands high above your head. I'm about to lead you. To make the greatest prayer you will ever make in your life. You have prayed for prosperity. You have prayed for health. But now you will pray the greatest prayer. With every sense of sincerity in your heart. The Lord Jesus is in this place. I'd like you to say after me, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. I accept that I'm a sinner. But tonight, I've heard your word. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to live a miserable life on earth. Therefore, I come to you. My Savior, my King, my Lord. I repent of all my sins. I receive cleansing. And I receive eternal life into my spirit from today i'm a child of god from today my name is in the book of life wash me with your precious blood i denounce sin and satan the power of sin is broken over my life from today forward ever backward never in the name of Jesus, 
keep your hands lifted let me pray for you father you have brought these ones by the power of your holy spirit they have heard your word tonight and they have made a genuine commitment my god and my king i pray let this be the beginning of a genuine journey into mighty things make them mighty men and women of god in the name of jesus christ we receive you into the greatest and the biggest family the biggest family the very family of faith in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit celebrate god for them we welcome you we welcome you we welcome you hallelujah now pastor jakes is going to have a meeting with you tomorrow by 5 p.m please and please it's important that we follow you up and guide you all right just help you to know what it is that you need to do from here pastor jakes the venue the venue is going to be chapel just by the book stand please make it if you invited anyone here please encourage them hallelujah so that they will have a meeting with pastor jakes will get you filled with the holy spirit and will guide you on the foundational truths of the kingdom hallelujah the lord preserve you now please rise up gloriously follow the ushers they will have your names and your details will contact you and will meet with you koinonia celebrate them celebrate them we will see them in heaven someday hallelujah hallelujah now listen hallelujah I'm declaring from today until next week Thursday a prophetic time of evangelism are you hearing that I'm going to pray for you that the unction of the spirit will come upon you are you hearing me I want you to take many of you you can go in groups you can go individually evangelism in your room in your home if you cannot preach invite them are you getting me throughout this week i will do it everybody don't condemn people don't create a subject of argument there is nothing to argue about you are going to go with the power of the holy ghost we have taught you here as you go you will heal the sick as you go you will cast out devils you will demonstrate the authority of the kingdom I'll do that just before we round up. Right now, let me take those who are worshipping with us for the first time. If this is your first time worshipping with us in Koinonia, we love you, we celebrate you. Inside and outside, no matter how far you are, I'd like you to leave your seat and come out quickly. We want to bless and speak a word of prophecy. God bless you, you are welcome. God bless you, you are welcome. Appreciate them. Appreciate them. If this is your first time, don't remain behind. Don't be ashamed outside there are a lot of you you're welcome keep coming keep coming god brought you to bless you god brought you to bless you this is not all some of you are ashamed keep coming we have a blessing for you jesus son of god i believe in you I believe in you. Thank you so much for coming, every one of you. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. And our goal here is to build people, to bring them into a place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. To teach you the principles of the kingdom so that you will go and be an ambassador. You will represent the government of heaven here in the earth. Thank you so much for coming. We love you. We truly appreciate every single one of you. Hallelujah. And we want to pray for you right now. Listen, we are anointed. If we bless you, you are blessed. Saints of God, stretch your hands as we bless them. Remember, you have the anointing. Stretch your hands and speak over their lives. We bless you with the blessings of the heavens. We command that you are strengthened. We bless you with the spirit of prayer. The Lord strengthens you. You are mighty upon the earth. And you are relevant even in the spirit.
May the Lord bless you. Every sickness in your body will curse it right now. Every oppression of darkness, every door that is closed against you, we command that you will go back and find it open. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming once again. Now, I'd like you to just follow the ushers. They will have your details and they will welcome you more warmly on our behalf. God bless you. Thank you. The Lord bless you. Just follow the ushers. Follow the gentleman waving his hands and they will direct you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The announcements, please. Hallelujah. Now, before we take the announcements, I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life and release grace upon you. Koinonia is a place where we raise mighty men. It's not a place where men see a mighty man. Hallelujah. Every one of you will be involved in evangelism. Many of you, for the first time, you will see yourself flowing in the gifts of the Spirit this week. Hallelujah. Do we need to meet in the evening? Is there any need? Hallelujah. Is there any need? Okay. You are saying yes. That means you will come. Not at chapel there. What will happen is the evangelism is not for evening. Are you getting me now? The evangelism is for is for from this night right now huh? till evening. Do we do that, Jakes? Sorry, one minute. Let me just consult with the evangelist. Okay. Praise God. Now, this is it. Get them born again by yourself. Alright? Every evening from tomorrow night, from, from five, Pastor Jakes will be there. Sometimes I'll be there. You are going to bring them and get them filled with the Holy Ghost by yourself. Listen, if any one of them says they are sick, you are going to pray for them. If you pray and it does not happen, we will help you. But now this is practicum. See, school of ministry students laughing. Hallelujah. Praise God. So every one of you is a man and a woman. You are declared a man and a woman of God this week. Are you hearing me? Don't tell me from now till next Friday. You cannot win at least two people. No matter how stubborn they are. Depend on the ability of the Holy Ghost. Share with them your own experience. Hallelujah. Everyone be involved. Young or old, be involved. Do you believe that? Lift up your hands. So when you get them born again, invite them. By five o'clock, we'll be there in the chapel. We'll talk to them. You get them born again. If they are sick, pray for them. Expect miracles flow in the anointing flow in the word of knowledge make your mistakes don't worry don't worry if you make your mistakes hallelujah if you don't know what to say just talk the bible says when you stand before them you shall not think of what to say in that very hour it will not be you speaking but the spirit of your father lift your hands let me pray for you hallelujah i prophesy father we are declaring by the leading of the spirit that this week we are going to depopulate hell and populate heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that grace to move in the supernatural, grace to evangelize with power, power evangelism, evangelism through the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. Many of you will bring back a mighty harvest of people. Some of you, your loved ones that have refused to get born again. This is their week of salvation finally. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I release you to flow in the prophetic. I release you to flow in miracles. I release you to flow in the gifts of the spirit. I release you to flow in the prosperity that will bring the harvest. In the mighty name of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye!
pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline 